What's up, y'all? It's TTC, aka the Thunder Conductor, and we back with another YouTube video and Twitch stream. If you're on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And if you're on Twitch, make sure you follow and ring the bell. We do this once a week and every other week on Twitch. So let's get right into it. I got a question for y'all. What was your favorite color combination pre-band? And has it changed post-band? I know for me, my origin story for CDH was Model Red Reunia. I loved it, and it was just that unique deck that fit my personality of explosivity. Over time though, I did find that I enjoyed Esper, but eventually came to find that Jeskai was my heart because you got the control aspects of white and blue and you have the explosivity of red and all these amazing finishers with pre-band Dockside and with still here Underworld Breach. However, I'm finding post-band with the loss of JLo and Mana Crypt and Dockside, I do think that I just am falling back to my Esper roots namely with Marnie's Calgar, just to kind of say, hey, I could still play that slight control, leverage my power ticking, have all fun like that, but I still get great win cons with Thassa's Oracle and with REX Salvagers and all, ISO Rev and all these fun things that are more viable with the loss or taking away Dockside. However, I haven't given up on Jeskai. I still love this color combination. Breach is still, in my opinion, the best win con in our format. And I, I'm here to bring one of my boys here to talk about an amazing commander, AKA Zergo and Otatai, to talk about, hey, yo, Jess guy's not going. We still here, we doing our thing. And I, I just want to give a quick introduction to my guy, David, AKA Draco. Come on in the chat, brother. What's going on? What's going on? Brother, I'm living <laughs> my best life. How you feeling, brother? I'm feeling fine. Cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. All right, well, we here to talk about Zergo and Ojatai. If you all are not familiar, this commander is an orc dragon that costs two colorless and just guy to cast. It has flying, haste, and Zergo and Ojatai has hexaproof as long as it entered this turn. But we don't care about that, okay? It's a 4 4 that says whenever one or more dragons you control deal combat damage to a player or battle, look at the top card, three cards of your library, put one of them, one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order, and you may return one of those dragons to the owner's hand. And it's a may ability, okay? So I'll first, with, we got a um, behemoth here. This ain't no, this no lightweight. So I wanna first, <laughs> Draco, bro, talk to me. First, tell me your introduction to Silly Ace. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what got you to play Zergo and Ojitai, bro? All right, uh, first off, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. Um. I'm from New Jersey. Uh, shout out to New Jersey. Shout out to Tri-State. Yeah, um, yeah. I love playing dragons in any format. Uh, yeah. Any 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 format I can play, I'm just gonna jam dragons. Oh dear. So man. when I saw this, I saw a card advantage. That's another thing I love is just putting cards in hand. That's just that's just so important, especially in the meta. You just want to have as much card advantage as possible and this commander does just that uh you get to play a few dragons uh you get to play some clones that we'll get into later that just give you more and more of these triggers and just put so many cards in hand and you overwhelm your opponents with value mm -hmm. i feel it All right, cool, cool so was this your first cdh commander or like tell us your origin story bro like i was reon yeah well, was my, but like what was your origin story like tell me brother before before i even got into tournaments i was uh i was messing around with yuriko believe it or not um i used to play yuriko a high power and then uh over time i just kept up in the power until it was like cdh level and i was like hmm okay what else can i do and, exactly, and um exactly. I, I messed around with a few like weird commanders here and there um there's another dragon called uh, Atushi. It's basically a mono red dragon. Oh, um, how do you spell that? Atushi. Uh, a T S U S H I. It's at sushi. Basically. Oh, this is that Rionia tech. Oh, yeah, 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 Heck yeah. You, yeah, you've probably seen this, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. All day, every day. This is aggravated salt, baby. Yeah. This, uh, this little guy is real, real fun. Um, wasn't super powerful, but it was really fun once you got it. Uh, used to play it with, um, what was that card? There's an equipment that gives it Myriad. So every time it attacks, you make two copies of it. 
so that was that was fun but um eventually i stumbled upon zergon ojita i'm like wait this is crazy especially <laughs> if i clone it yeah. <laughs> exactly i feel it man and so like i love that i love how you stay true with the love of dragons even despite that it's like cdh and we got the blue farms and the rock size and the kindness all these powerful things you're like y'all I want to play powerful things as well, but yo, I like dragons, bro. Like y'all, fuck off, bro. I, I want to, I want to play dragons. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's that's right. Yeah, I love that. No, like, like you gotta let people know. Like, I, there. That's what I feel like. A lot of people forget about CDH. Like the reason a lot of reason people play EDH in general is because of the creativity you get. And people think because we're playing CDH that like, oh, y'all aren't creative. You're not brewing. You're not. You're just trying to net deck. And I'm like, no. It's okay to net deck, but there's still a lot of creativity because we don't have to deal with the same things that modern or pioneer deals with with these extensive bands lit band lists because our band list is so small. There's we have 30 plus years of cars just to break and <laughs> to sit here exactly. and say that like this is the only like that there's only one way to play the game or one way to break the meta. Nah, I can't agree with that big dog, but we're going to get all up in this deck and I want to just take it down to the bones. But before we do, I just got one thing to say to the people. If you're looking for more ways to support the show, we have a plethora starting off with our Thunder Legion Patreon. Please join that community. Have fun. I want to give a huge shout out to our Mono Red patron Patreons, Wavy Ashira, Bissy Baxson, The Praetor, B-Rad, and Sir Trekkie. Y'all rock and you keep the lights on the way that you could not even imagine. Please check that community out. They get all the perks like playing on our live streams, shout out on our streams and YouTube videos, and at the higher tiers, you can get free proxies and discount codes. If that's not really your thing, though, please still join the Thunder Conductor community. It's free to join on Discord. We brew, we jam games, we talk about our favorite gameplay moments. We have a blast. But if none of that tickles your fancy, you say, hey, T, I don't want the Patreon, the proxies, or none of the other perks. I just want to say one time for the fun time. I love what you do, and I want to support you. No problem. Check out the link in the bio. You can buy me a coffee. It keeps me up. It keeps the lights on. But with that said, come on, dude. Come on, Draco, bro. Talk to me, bro. Let's get into this Zergo Ojatai. Like, let's start with the deck archetype. Is this turbo mid-range stacks control? Like, what are we doing in this deck, brother? All right. So we are a mid-range deck, but we want to lean towards more control nowadays. Um, I will say after the bans, I did have to reevaluate some win cons, and it led to me making more room for more interaction at this point. So I'm saying that we're like a controlling mid-range deck. Just it. to, uh, we, we want the game to go long. We want to accrue card advantage. We want to accrue mana advantage. We want to go over the top with just sheer value. Yes. And then just finish finish with as much protection as we could possibly need. 100%. I feel that. Okay, so we got this control mid-rangey brew. You know what I'm saying? Got a lot of, we have the Grand Abolisher, Grand Abolisher and size effects to help protect us while we're pre presenting these combo wins. So then what strategy or game plan do you feel that is best to get you towards a win? Uh, so we usually want to just uh, start with just like any value engine okay. um, and just let the game, you know, let the game come to you, right? Mm -hmm. You don't need to push anything. You just need to just deploy your value engines, interact here and there do a little bit of yapping you know how it is <laughs> yeah. when when the when the wind presents itself you take it that's it yeah that's how it's gonna go you, most of the time <laughs> oh baby like bro i feel like i'm talking to myself right now i tell people all the time like hey look like there's no reason to rush yo <laughs> like you exactly. just mulligan down for that solid draw engine have it and that's why i love having like i love that you have this value engine in the command zone so it's like even if they take your wrist stick or mystic or s percent allows like all right well by that time i usually have enough man to cast zergo and ojatai notably it has haste it has evasion with flying so you really can't stop me from seeing more cards. And I love how you say, like, I don't have to force it. The win is going to come to me. I just got to be patient, talk my shit here and there, you know what I'm saying, do my little politic. And so I feel like I'm talking yeah. to myself right now. Like, exactly. I love this. I love that. And energy. one other thing I'll throw in is uh, this deck is pretty, um, it's not as punishing for mulliganing, right? Mm. Uh, you can keep a hand that's just two lands in an LED and just play your commander. Really? That's it. Like, like if you mull low enough 
you could just look for that as your way out. You say, okay, bet, I have card advantage in the command zone. Let me get my commander down early and we'll just get to work. That's it. And no, and like I like I love that because notably we are on Underworld Breach. So knowing that our LEDs in our graveyard from ton one means as we're seeing more cards, we're working our way slowly to that breach win. All we need at the, is the breach and the uh, the brain freeze or whatever combo other combo we want to pull off. So I'm not mad at that. Like shit, if T and K can do it, why can't we do it too? You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Well, with that, I I love that energy. So let's just get to the let's get to it, man. Tell me about the strengths and the weaknesses for this deck. Like, what really makes it broken? And also, even you could talk about post ban. Like, what are some weaknesses we've been dealing with? Okay, so um, post ban, we're looking at um, a lack of mana acceleration for the commander and just like any of our better cards in the deck, right? So we have to lean into stuff like um, mana drain. Uh, just a quick way to, you know, tempo somebody, um, and then you get the mana back for your troubles. Uh, there's a card called, um, there's a card called Reckless Barbarian, mm. which is a, it's a nice way to get the commander out turn three. More dragons. It's also, you slick. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's you also, no, slick. that's, no, that's relevant though. So check this out. If you can get your commander out, but you already have Reckless Barbarian just chilling, that's another trigger for the commander. You just get in damage and you trigger, you get a uh, second trigger with that. True. Okay, 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 okay. I see you, I see you. I so, see you. yeah, the synergy's there, and then you get the ramp if you need the ramp. And then later on, um, if that's sitting out, you can use the extra mana to fuel like a breach or something like that. I feel yeah, that. it just it just provides a lot of value by itself. Okay, 100% that that makes that sounds amazing so it's it sounds like this my next question is talking post ban like what were your post ban switch outs because i'm guessing you were on all three dock side j-lo and mana crypt like what were those switch outs whereas uh was this reckless barbarian one of the switch outs that we saw talk to me brother right so one of the switch out let me tell you about what i took out because i took out a lot of cards Ooh, um okay, talk to me i used to be on magda <laughs> mm. um one of my win lines was actually magda dockside it was very compact it's creature based so it's hard to interact with and after you cast those two if the dockside count was a decent amount then you don't have to cast any more spells you would just win the game right mm. um i was also on the recruiters because they were easy ways to search for any part of the combo exactly and one tech one piece of tech i had um was i had some i had a few more clones but you could use one of the clones to play recruiter to get dockside play dockside get the mana and then you play the clone to target the recruiter yes and then you get uh magda with that second trigger and then you just go off from there dude um, i love yeah it. i love <laughs> i um I, oh my gosh, I just got to throw this in there. I love that chain line because like, first of all, especially because we're already looking to clone our commander. So it's not really impossible to save, like to, like to have that mindset of like, yeah, I just hold this clone until I get my recruiter and then just push it out because Dockside counts late game got so ridiculously large. But I actually used to play a commander called Satya Aetherflux Genius. And that was actually a similar line that I did with that. I would go cast the recruiter, cast Dockside, go to combat, make a copy of the recruiter. And instead of going to get Magda, I would go get Baron Master Wizard. And so I would do the entire Baron Master Dockside and then just infinitely start just bouncing and recasting my Imperial to either go Spellseeker to Muddle to go get uh, Blind Obedience or I would do the recruiter to go get Pinnacle Monk, uh, Spellseeker to go get Lightning Bolt and do Lightning Bolt shenanigans with Pinnacle Monk, the new MDFC from Modern Horizons 3. So, man, <laughs> like... I love those recruiter lines, but it they had to go. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> sorry. They they kind of went with Dockside, no cap. <laughs> they they served us well, but yeah, they we did. must move on. Um, I'll come back to the clone thing in a bit because uh, I, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. You're good, but bro. um, yeah, basically, um, I ended up replacing that that whole combo line with uh just more interaction and i threw to fairy displacer kitten combo in here oh yeah gotcha. just, uh, it's gotcha. it's compact it, it does what it has to do you know <laughs> it, i agree 
plus you're running all the rocks to like support it. Like, of course, your talents right. can't really get the job done, but Mox Opal, Manaval, Gramalev, Mox Amber, you know what I'm saying? These are all LED. You know, we've talked about that already. Like, these are all just simple things, you know? So, yeah, right. I love that. I love that. Okay. All right. Well, we talked about strengths and weaknesses. It doesn't, I'm surprised to say it didn't feel like you lost too much of a step with the loss of Dockside. I was worried about that because five mana is still substantial. And but it sounds like you're still able like to drop the hand because it does have H, you're able to move forward. So how has it been post ban in the tournament scene then? Like since you're still able to be a viable Jeskai deck, like how has it been post ban? So I um I haven't played in a ton of events with this recently, but I did play in one this past week. There was like a very small three round cut to top four tournament this okay. past week. I was able to win the whole thing actually, but um, yeah, the yeah, deck okay. still feels fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Funny enough, my first my first game back, my first tournament back, I just win. But Good um, shit. yeah, it it felt just like just like it's supposed to. We just did the card advantage thing. Uh, we did the outvaluing. We outvalued the the all the opponents, and yep. we were just able to get there at our own pace. That was it that sounds good okay that's not bad like what uh post ban what in this deck specifically what cards did you feel like got stronger like with the with losing mana crypt j-lo and dockside but what did you feel was like oh this is the new best card in the deck oh the new best card uh i would say um well stuff like smothering tithe gets a lot better because you don't mm. have to be worried about dockside coming in stealing your treasures yes um I, I'm also on uh, Goldspan Dragon I as another way to just, that. yeah, <laughs> another way to just get more mana. And yeah, like I said, you don't have to sack the treasures because somebody's going to try to take them with a dock side. You can just, you could just sit on all your mana and just uh, store it up until you're ready to win with it. Yes. Like one combo that, uh, I want to get into Queen Cons just immediately because you kind of tapped into one of the questions I had. Like when I was mm -hmm. kind of like doing my back research, I saw that there's actually a combo in this deck that I've never seen before with Goldspan Dragon, Fairy Mastermind, and Smothering Tithe. And I was like, what the fuck? There's a dragon combo in CEDH? And it sounds ridiculous because you have Goldspan Mac Dragon that costs five mana, Fairy Mastermind that costs four mana, and then Fairy, uh, no, Fairy Mastermind that costs two mana, and then uh, Smothering Cloud tithe that cost uh four mana but however because two out of four three of these cards enable are basically like mana generators it's almost like it's nothing so i just wanted to ask you like talk to me about win cons but please start with this combo like was this something you were already on pre-band and how often do you find this coming up so i <laughs> somebody pointed this out to me a long time ago and i've never gotten to do it until this past week funny enough what? Um, so basically, Smothering Tithe obviously generates mana. Yes. So even though you have some high mana costs here, it's almost, they, these cards basically pay for themselves. Mm. You don't actually have to invest too much into them. Um, so once you get Goldspan and Smothering Tithe and Fairy Mastermind out, yeah. um, each treasure that uh, you get from Smothering Tithe is going to be doubled by Goldspan's ability. Right, right. So right, right, right. what's going to happen is you're going to activate Fairy Mastermind. Mm -hmm. Each player is going to draw a card. Yep. Uh, you're going to get three triggers from this Smothering Tithe mm -hmm. that, um, I mean, eventually people won't be able to pay for them. Exactly. And uh, so that's going to be three treasures, but that's going to be six mana because of gold spin. Exactly. And four of that mana is going to go right back into the Fairy Mastermind's ability. Yeah. So every time you activate Fairy Mastermind, you're going to net a treasure yes. and you're going to be able to keep doing this and looping it until your opponents draw their whole decks and they yes. they mill themselves out, basically. Yeah. And, and we have uh, we have Angel's Grace in the deck as well, just to yes. make sure we don't accidentally die. Yes. But <laughs> I was that, just about that... to bring that up. Like that is, I that is, I love the Fairy Mastermind, Angel's Grace, Infinite Mana. Like any loop, if you make Infinite Mana and you have Blue and White in your deck, just add Angel's Grace and Fairy Mastermind. It's such, they're both such good cards. And please, continue, right. brother, yes, yes. 
Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So we got to this point in my round one of this tournament mm-hmm. where um, I had Smothering Tithe out for uh, early, very early on. Mm-hmm. I had Gold Span. Um, I found Gold Span like, like later in the game, and I was able to get a couple uh, Ojatide triggers off of him. But um, I was able to find Muddle the Mixture, which gotcha. can which can search for a two mana spell or two mana card so i was like oh wait i just have it here and i just i just shot it i just said hey i'm gonna transmute for fairy mastermind i'm gonna activate it a lot yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah the opponents didn't have enough to they didn't have much of anything to deal with that they just said all right yeah we're gonna draw our decks and lose <laughs> Man, so is this actually I, I fucking love that first of all you touched on one of my favorite cards ever i love mother mixture because even when i'm not fa- playing full blown, blown control it's such a good tutor i understand three mana sorcery speed i got you but in the mm-hmm. worst universe it's a counter spell y'all run right run the mixture please um uh, I want to, also go ahead oh, i'm sorry no no go ahead. um yeah Muddle's so good too because even though it's three mana, uh, it can't be countered very easily. Like most most people most people's cards aren't countering a transmute ability. Mm-hmm. And second, um, you're not feeding a Ristic or Mystic because you're not casting a card. Exactly, exactly. It forces them to have to run like Trick Bind or Stifle or some other Stifle effect right. that. Like, yes, there are decks that run them, and I'm not gonna, like, I love Trick Bind, like, to my heart. Like, I really, really do love this card. But I'll say in addition, with all honor and respect, I'm gonna be honest, like, no one's gonna Trick Bind this ability. Like, but, I mean, and if they do, then they've been holding it up for a while and good for them. That's awesome. But it's, I've never had my mother to make sure ability Trick Bind. And maybe it'll happen to me sometime in the future, but until that day, I'm gonna keep running to mother the picture and not feel yeah. bad about it. <laughs> I, I wanted to talk a little bit about this combo. Um, what I find a lot is I usually like to do it under a silence effect, but with your experience, do you just find that this deck runs enough control magic to just raw dog it through like the activations and then naturally get into the silence effect? Or do you like to establish the silence effect first and then begin the loop of them drawing cards? Uh, obviously, it's a lot safer to do the silence effect. I'm a big fan of just making sure you're, anything you want to do is protected. I agree. But... If you have all three of these out already and you just start activating uh, outside of like something like trick buying, they can't really stop it. Like they can they can target something to remove it. And then in response, you just activate it again. True, true. And you actually just you actually can't beat any of these cards if they're already out. And it's yeah. like I'm going to draw all my interaction and I'm also going to be making a lot of mana and right. Nine times out of ten, I play more interaction than my opponents because that's just how the deck is set up at this point. We're just a, right. a mid-range control deck, right? And yeah. we're we're gonna draw and we're gonna make mana, and my opponents are gonna have to find something yeah. to fight against my everything. <laughs> no, I, def- I definitely do hear you. It's like it kind of for because each iteration. Uh, when you activate that fairy mastermind, you make the three treasures, that's six mana, you crack two treasures. Once you get about two, three iterations in, of course, if they can hit you with a Bosage or an Odawara early on, where it's just like, oh shit, I didn't have enough time to get enough mana to like put multiple activations on the stack above your uh, your channel effect. But once we get about mm. three, I can see where you get three or four or maybe just throw between that two and four spot where I just like each tre- y'all each treasure is cracking for two mana. So, you know, all it takes is just two treasures to put another activation on the stack in response to your ability. And unless it ha- it's like a trick bind where it is uh, has split second or like an angel's grace or something along that line. It really just gets the job done beautifully. So yeah, I definitely can hear you. Where, of course, it's great to have the silence, but I, I, that's a good point. You can just start winning on top of the stack if they try to respond to it until you can hit your own natural silence. And I noticed that we're not running a revelant silence, which is it's okay. It's okay. Uh, it, it was that just an exclusion because like a post ban, like the two mana silence wasn't really working. Or talk to me about that. You know what's funny? I meant to put that in here, and I completely forgot. <laughs> I, so <laughs> I was gonna. All right. So I was gonna swap this talisman of conviction out 
for Revel in Silence, and it completely slipped my mind. Um, <laughs> that actually should be a part of this list. I'm not going to hold you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Well, then, if you don't mind, really quick. I'll you, swap, yeah, I'll swap yeah, it out right now. <laughs> you can swap it out real quick, and I'll hit, tell me when to hit refresh, and it's all good. We can make that switch real quick. Like, Because I was like, yo, like, um, while, while you're making that switch, I was... I have to give flowers where flowers are due. The first community to really put me on to Revelin' Signs was the fucking Mardu community. And those cats, I lost to it so often. I was just like, whatever, whatever, whatever. Until I started to play Jessica, I was like, bro, this card is freaking busted. Because, granted, Nadu was banned, but the, you're saying on the backside, it's, it's an offensive and defensive instant speed silence effect. That even works against Sise pre band was great because even when they do all their dockside shenanigans, they can't activate their planeswalkers, so you force them to act to navigate the game differently. But on the front side, especially in a deck like Saya, where we're making uh, clones that can stay around, that stacks effect keeps people like, say, for example, they had their flame scroll celebrant on the front side against you. You technically couldn't do the fairy mastermind loop infinitely because you'd be taking a damage each activation, and so right. This, yeah, like this is a card that I think, yo, even, even post ban, I still love this card. If you can run it, I think it's awesome. I really, really love it because it's just, it's not just a stacks piece. It's the main thing is it's a silence effect. And I don't care that it gets exiled because it's still a good card. But yeah, uh, no, absolutely. Yeah. So we're still talking about win cons, brother. So go ahead. Talk to me about win cons. Let's just talk. Let's go ahead. Just go ahead, brother. So, all right, we gotta we gotta talk about breach. I, actually, do we even? I mean, we'll we'll, we'll mention breach, yeah. but uh, we yeah. all know what breach does. You got your intuition in here. Mm -hmm. Your intuition is gonna get breach, Savine's reclamation, and Lion's Eye Diamond. Mm -hmm. um, the the whole point here is that no matter what your opponent chooses, you're gonna get everything you need to just start doing your breach combo. Got you. And intuition. And I'm going to talk about another card that maybe not a lot of people have heard of here. Okay. Uh, Fervent Mastery, which is basically, it's almost like intuition in the sense that you can search for three cards. Okay. Um, the, I guess, awkward part about it is you have to discard those three, uh, three of, you have to discard three cards uh, at random from your hand. But mm -hmm. if you get the same cards that you would get with intuition, then you're just gonna you're gonna have your breach set up no matter what so i i like this i like this in the sense that um it's just another way to set up your breach it's a redundant card uh akin to intuition it gives us more consistency when we're searching for ways to win the game um I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of this card, actually. Yeah, I, I got a, <laughs> so I got a pushback and a question. So my one pushback, I want to first, I want to make this clear. I love this card in theory. How I've never actually, uh, other than I think it was Fervent Alchemist played uh, the new Nars set, and he played this card because it was like a Turbo Breach deck. And mm -hmm. I've seen it in there, and but I'm going to be honest, even when I saw it there, I really didn't fully just take appreciation the fact that it, it is a sorcery speed intuition. So yeah. then that kind of gets into, and that's the part I love about it, which is um, fucking amazing. The part I want to push back about is the even with the four mana cost, it says you could pay two colors and two red rather than pay the spell's mana cost. If you do the two colors and two red was paid, an opponent discards any number of cards and draws that many cards. And that's not, I don't, that, okay, that, you know, I'm trying to win the game. If you got it, you got it. It is what it is. Hopefully I can do this under silence. If not, it's no biggie. My part, mm -hmm. the, uh, the sorcery speed is my biggest holdup because the intuition is great because it can you can do it on instep and then have the five mana to pull Savine's uh, back from the graveyard. With this, I, this can upwardly cost about four plus five is nine mana. You know, two red, one white, and then five colorless. Like if in game, do you ever find like that? That's a little too much to pull your full combo off, or has it just been like? Does this deck make that much mana where it just doesn't care? Like, talk to me so i do appreciate the pushback it's very valid um i will say that this isn't something you can usually go for early on okay. um this is more like after you've been kind of playing the game and you just need a one card win con uh you have all your value you have all your mana you just finished your zero and ojitai triggers so you have plenty of cards 
So mm -hmm. it's just a matter of, all right, we need to assemble a win here. And this card just does that. You know what? You, you said the word that I love. You said it. You said with the phrase, the one card win con. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I keep bringing up this list because it was actually my favorite list for the last few months, ever since Mono Horizon 3s. The reason I told people Satya was so lethal is because we had four one con win cons and it was intuition, both recruiters and spell seeker because I ran the spell seeker line as well. And the right. reason and I kind of have to push back on my own pushback because granted, we did just lose Dockside, so that is a big mana accelerator. However, this is I do love that I can see one card and say, OK, one card plus mana just wins the game. And we have a similar thing, of course, in Esper with Wishclaw Talisman. If you have Wishclaw and you run the Displacer Kin uh, Teferi, you can just go Wishclaw for Teferi, bounce it back. And you can do the whole line with just Wishclaw. And that's just another card. If I have this one card and mana, I win the game. So, yeah, I got to push back on my own pushback. I think that this is a tech, especially even post band, where the game is going a little, just about half a turn to a turn slower. I like this. I, I can't believe I never thought I would say that. I actually really like this. I will throw one more piece of tech in with the tech. Okay. Uh, if you do the, the cost reduced version okay. and you have like a smothering tithe out, you can kind of maybe <laughs> bait somebody into drawing more cards just to give you more mana. And that, oh, <laughs> that, that, that it's, it's in too deep, but like that's something that could come up. <laughs> no, it's, it's like it's kind of like you're dead. They like you, it's kind of like if you do a blue player, like they kind of have that conundrum. Like, I have no interaction, y'all. Like, where well, you got to draw cards and so discard your hand, but I'm gonna give them five treasures. Like, we're gonna yeah. lose the game either, either, either way, so you might as well take the card draw, you know what I'm saying? Like, because it's kind of it, damn, you really put the table in that damned if you do damned if you don't kind of situation man it's, exactly man this is making me kind of want to add more uh smothering tithe tutors to my list smothering tithe is such a good card man. Oh, that card is <laughs> that card shouldn't have been printed <laughs> don't say that too loud they go yeah let me all right no no edit that out edit that out <laughs> <laughs> man, I love this. I love this, brother. Um, what, before we move off of Breach, I did have a, another question to ask. Um, I noticed right now we're actually, and I can double check. I noticed we're not running Jessica's Will right now. And I want to ask if you can ever see like a universe where Jessica's Will, Wheel of Fortune plus Breach, that combo would be have a place in your list, or is it just a little too techy for, or is it just doesn't really have a place? Um,. I don't hate it. Jessica's will. I, I'm. I'm a bit iffy on because I don't want to. I don't want to use um, like both modes and then exile stuff that I can't play because you only get red mana. True. That's fair. Um, it, it's. I could see myself testing it at some point, but I. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's not bad. I, I don't. If somebody were to run that in there, if they wanted to copy this list, but they wanted to throw that in there, I wouldn't hate it. But yeah. I, I just personally decided against it, but I, I will try it at some point. Yeah. And if I can just throw this out there, take this as a complete grain of salt, bro. Mm -hmm. If you're on the fervent mastery line as another copy of intuition, just mm -hmm. will technically gives you a shit ton of red mana to then first use for the fervent mastery and to help cast the Savine's reclamation flashback if you end up discarding it. So, ah, uh, nigga. You, you, you that's a, no, that's a valid argument. You like, know what? You know, like, just, okay. throwing it, just throwing that out there. I do respect where you're coming from. Like, um, impulsive card draw is my least favorite because of the revealed information. I'm not a huge, even in mono red, I don't play reckless handling or any of those effects. If you all are not familiar, uh, reckless handling says, and I don't want to risk, yeah, Reckless Handling is a card. There's a oh no, that's that's actually a artifact tutor. I'm thinking, uh, what is, what card am I? It's the uh, Exile the top two cards. Reckless. Library. Uh, I it's Reckless something. I know what you're it's, talking about. It's though. Reckless. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's Reckless something. Chat, if y'all know it, please tell me. Like, uh, Nart March of Reckless Joy. I do like that one because that's instant speed. It'll it'll come to me in a second. But when you have to, oh, Reckless Impulse. There we go. 
Oh, uh, of course. Colorless and the red sorcery <laughs> exile the top two cards of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. And so, especially in mono red, what a lot of cats will say, well, this is card adventures. This is what we have to work with. This is what we have to use. And I was like, no, because especially when you have one card combos, you're basically saying, I'm going to play this. I don't have enough mana to cast it. And then we're going to like, everyone can like have a full rotation to prepare for me to try to win on the following turn. And right. I don't like that because I like to play more close to the chest. So even though I have to play less efficient cards, I just won't like I'll run like the one mana expedite cantrips over the reckless impulses. So, but I do still like Jessica's will because like, I mean, it, I got to bro. It, that's it's like it combos with underworld breach, will of fortune and, uh, and Jessica's will plus the fervent mastery. That's kind of techie, but we'll, we'll move forward. Um, let's move past breach and keep talking to me about some more combos we're running, brother. What's some win cons? Okay, so we, we talked about gold span. I'll touch on kitten again okay. briefly. Um, it's a fairy kitten combo. Uh, okay. Basically, if you have these two out, you can cast a mana neutral or mana positive uh, artifact, which we have a decent amount of. Okay. Um, and you're able to, whenever you cast that spell, you can use to fairy. Uh, you can use kitten's ability to. Uh, Exile and return to fairy, gotcha. which will allow you to then activate his ability again. So yes. you're going to minus just to return the artifact back to your hand, and you could draw a card. Yep. And repeat the process. So we we can draw through the whole deck. Um, I have two finishers here, mm -hmm. um, the two direct finishers here in blind obedience and earthquake. Okay. Um, I like blind obedience as a stacks piece by itself. Um, just slowing your opponents down, uh, slowing their mana progression down a little bit. Yeah. And Earthquake being a sweeper, since we're going to be seeing a lot of more, a lot more creatures like mana dorks and stuff. So just being able, and we might even be seeing more stacks creatures as well. So just being able to clear the board, just to push everybody back a couple turns and just as we continue forward because it only hits non-flying creatures and our mm -hmm. dragons are flying so uh, we're, we're not going to okay, be affected okay. as much i do like <laughs> that i do like that i mean it, it's it is post making infinite mana and of course we're running angel's grace so we can make infinite mana with teferi and displace again or actually you don't even need to make infinite mana you just need to make enough mana to put into x and yeah well oh but well, we could we could do it either or yeah, and I'm guessing we are still casting Angel's Grace with using Earthquake because it does do damage to each player. Right, uh, right, right. Yeah, right. yeah we're still, we still, we can't kill ourselves. Okay, all right, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, that, that okay. wouldn't be good. Yeah. Okay, that that wouldn't be good. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> random rules question: Does anyone know what happened? Like, if everyone dies, is it like a syndrome thing with everyone super? Nobody is, or is it like a? Is it like does it do app nap where like? active player dies first or dies last or some shit like how does that all work so, if, so. uh to my understanding uh if everybody were to die it actually depends on the tournament if we're talking tournament rulings okay but a lot of tournaments would say that the game goes to a draw and oh. whoever was the highest uh seeding like the highest placed in the tournament would be the winner and move oh, on fuck. to whatever round yeah all right. um we but the there ones. are <laughs> there are tournaments that will say the game just resets so you will have to check in with a to or a, a okay. judge that makes sense with okay that. okay it's not the end of the world i do i will add on that well i know we'll talk more about earthquake soon just as a regular board wipe but i do enjoy that you do ha that you have this as a uh as a finisher i do enjoy that and it also can be like i'm wiping the board except my flyers you know what i'm saying so that's really really cool that's really cool right. i like that okay I'm a big fan of uh, using every part of the buffalo. Um, oh, just you, having having cards that have just multi multi purpose in in like a mid rangey control deck like this is yes. just like so important. You want to get the most value out of every card you play. One hundred percent. I agree with that. One hundred percent. I love that. Uh, let's keep talking combos. We're doing yeah. I love everything I'm hearing so far. We got any other combos on the list, brother? uh let's um let's talk about it's not a combo per se and maybe i should wait to bring this up but it is one of the clones okay um 
Do you do you want to come back to it or should uh, I just if say it, no? If it's part of our win cons, brother, let's talk. Yeah, we talk on win cons. How we win in the game. So yeah, if this is part of what we win. We we can do a full clone deep dive in, later, and but we let's talk. If it's part of the win con, let's talk it. All right. Brief thing about cloning the commander for those who don't know. Um, once you once you get the triggers. Um, assuming that you attack two different players, you're not just adding the triggers, you're multiplying them. Gotcha. So if you have two Zergo no Jitais, they will see themselves do damage and they will see each other do damage, which will be four instead of two. Got you, got you. So got you. we have a clone here called Auton Soldier. Okay. And this makes a non-legendary clone of a legend, but that clone, it has Myriad. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'll skip the math. It, you get 12 triggers, which is you get to look at the top 36 cards of your library, mm. pick the best 12. <laughs> mm. So we're basically, so, this is basically ad nauseum for six mana. Exactly. Okay. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what it is. So if you're a fan of ad nauseum, that's what this card does for this deck. <laughs> got you, got you, got you. 100%. And if you're interested in the math, I'm pre you probably have this in a primer or somewhere where people can kind of, or someplace where they can kind of learn the math or understand the myriad triggers. But yeah, that that's spicy. I fucking love that. That's amazing. Yes. All day, every day. Okay. Um, uh, and, and then the last the last win con I'll briefly go over is uh, combat damage. You okay. gotta get it done the old fashioned way sometimes. Oh, so just yeah. beat face. So, <laughs> and is that us leveraging our non legendary clones? Is that us uh, talking maybe like Zerda pumping or how 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 are we usually doing that combat finish? Uh, it's really just you get the clones, you get other dragons, and you just you just get to work. That's <laughs> you, you're, you're gonna. This is usually like if, like let's say the board is too stacked out or something, and you don't think you can push for any sort of win, yes. you could just throw all your combos in the garbage and just keep interaction and just continue mm -hmm. beating fate and just actually lock down the table with just damage. Like, mm. the, not a lot that can challenge a, a bunch of five mana four fours. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that that makes definitely sense. Yeah, I feel that. You just keep the gameplay quick, tight, and just like, hey, y'all, like, y'all can scoop, or we gonna play this out, and I will play yeah. this out quick, and I'm gonna call y'all on slow play and everything. I got you. Okay, I like that. Uh, I absolutely love all these win cons, and I also love that you do have the the viability and ability to do combat damage as a viable outcome. As like it, it's just it's just good to have in your back pocket, and just knowing when to switch between I'm trying to combo to win or just trying to do beats for win is like it's a very it's a lot harder than people think because right. it, when people play casual, we a lot of times we're just they're just thinking just combat damage, and then they after a lot of training learn how to think more combo sort centered, but. The thing is I've had when I'm ever I'm coaching or ever talking to people, there's like, man, I don't know when to switch between combo and beats. And like, it's honestly, every game action changes that, you know, like there may be a time where you're going for combo and then something happens, a stacks piece comes out and says, you know what, like throw the combo out, I'm just gonna start moving towards beats. But then your opponent un accidentally removes it to uh, that stacks piece too early. And you're like, oh, I'm about to, I can go for the combo right here, right there. You know what I'm saying? The curse totem gets removed. I'm gonna go ahead and push for my fairy mastermind uh my fairy mastermind gold span dragon plus mother and top combo because the curse stone got removed because i'm not running the brave fuck that you know so that yeah. you, know, you know what i'm saying like other things along yeah. that line so i do love the ability to pivot between both <laughs> because you just you lose a dynamic when you don't when you can't finish with co with uh combat damage which isn't terrible but it it's i think in this slightly slower meta it's something powerful so before we move on to the next section, I wanted to ask one thing about uh, one more thing about the combo section. I noticed that we're not running the spell seeker combo uh, with um, where it goes spell seeker into intuition with the final fortune and all the other things to uh, well spell seeker into ephemerate to do the full combo mm -hmm. into breach. And I wanted to ask, uh, what was your thought process on that? And is that worth including, or is it just you found that it was still a little too slow or too man intensive? Talk to me about that. All right, so I was originally on Spellseeker combo, the Spellseeker package, if you will. Gotcha. Um, I was, at this time, I was also on the recruiters, so it, it made it easier to, uh, you know, tutor for the Spellseeker, and I was also, 
um, running the other package as well with the recruiters. So it was like one big robust package. But um, I found uh, I found that line to be a little too risky for my personal taste. I, I don't you. hate the combo itself, but like the the amount of times that Final Fortune has actually killed me mm. is it, it, it left a bad taste in my mouth. I was like, you know what? I don't think I need this. I'm just gonna scrap it. <laughs> I respect that. I really do. I I truly I truly respect that. I I'm still a huge fan of it. Um, especially the instant speed nature of final fortune like it's to the point that i actually added in chance for glory into my just guy list because i was just like man like mm -hmm. i um i wasn't that like, born is great i really do love that card however if you're more combat if you're more like a combat centric which technically zerga ultra tie because it leverages the combat step for advantage sometimes it's kind of like ah, mm -hmm. like i kind of want to be able to push instant speed wins in different ways so that final fortune or chance for glory is really, really powerful um, to enable me to win at instant speed, quote unquote. But on the flip side, it, bro, we got to remember it's play styles. We all got different personalities. So I'm not mad at that. I, I am not mad at that. I'm not going to knock that. So that's all good. Yeah, I, will, I will say it, it is a very good combo. It's compact. It's only six mana. Um, I, I recommend it to anybody who feels like they need another win con. Yeah. Uh, me personally, I'm, I'm cool without it. Yeah, that's just me. And no, yeah, and notably, you you are running fervent mastery. That is a way to. It's another way to assemble the full combo, um, which is like it's basically like another version of intuition. You know, that's what Spellseeker allows us to do: to assemble the full combo off one card. So, I think you're good, brother. So, yeah, uh, my next one, I want to talk about tutors. So, we've already talked, of course, on fervent mastery and intuition, but talk to me about the tutors that we use to help get us towards the win con. So we have seven tutors. Okay. Um, we are, we're not a, a tutor heavy deck. Um, we don't have the best colors for tutors necessarily. Um, but the ones we do have are just important enough to add. So we'll start with Enlightened Tutor. Okay. Um, this is a early game. Obviously we want to get like Ristic Mystic or Smothering Tithe. Gotcha. Those are just the best value engines available and uh, or you could even be getting stuff like Mana Vault or Soul Ring if you just want to ramp and you already have the value engine in hand. Right. Uh, whatever, however your hand is set up is going to determine what this uh, Enlightened Tutor gets. Gotcha. Uh, late game, you're looking for Underworld Breach because it's, it's time to win the game. Gotcha. Uh, I will say this, uh, and this applies to mystical tutor as well um being able to use your zergo no to tie flips to get the card immediately is very much a thing uh especially if we're getting like multiple triggers in a single turn then you can go like okay the first three triggers i assembled a bunch of stuff now i'm going to use my tutor to get whatever i'm missing and try to go for a win or what have you Mm, okay i like that i like that i like that it's basically that's your timna you know you can cash your tutor yeah. them them crack the pile with the timna i like that that's really good i like that cool yeah actually timna and zergo no Jutai actually have very similar uh templating for their text mm. which is kind of interesting but um moving on we have fervent mastery which we talked about is just another intuition in this deck mm -hmm. um there there's not much else that you want to use it for besides just trying to win the game. Yeah. Um, if you're in an emergency situation, you could get other things like let's say, let's say you want to get like breach LED, but you are locked under like a graph diggers cage or something. You could tutor up like a chain of vapor as well, mm. or like different pieces of like interaction if you feel like you need that got you got you got if you already have pieces of the breach line in your hand you can get some similar to intuition kind of bolster your hand and your opponents don't actually choose what to discard it's kind of random but if you right. if you only need the led to complete the package well at that point i'll get led and two pieces of interaction to protect it and then at least hope to keep one piece because i don't mind if the led gets put into the graveyard i like that exactly i like that okay. um we got gamble uh gamble can get anything it's very good in this deck um, especially with all the card advantage that regenerate gamble is usually just like demonic tutor in yes. in the late game um you can use it as a one card combo to get uh underworld breach as well gotcha um 
you get the underworld breach and you escape the gamble and then you get led and then you can just finish the combo from that point on 100%. uh very very good versatile card to have in our arsenal here 100 percent. notably if, um, I can, in, if i can quickly add on to that like uh the cool thing sure. like how you brought up that like uh, a lot of people for game because some people aren't a big fan of gamble but i love what you brought up how you can literally just start off get breach and uh depending on what your graveyard size is looking back like you brought it up you can go straight to either getting led if your hand is big to like to fill your graveyard up or if your graveyard's what's filled you can go ahead and just go straight to brain freeze to to fill the gra if your oh i flipped that depending on how large your hand is versus your graveyard you can start led or brain freeze to fill up whichever is more needed as long as you have the mana to recast gamble to get the third piece so that's phenomenal i love how you kind of right. see you see that utility of gamble just literally just being a combo line enabler for breach i love that keep going brother all right so we got intuition which we also already talked about you just assemble your breach combos oh actually let's talk about intuition a little bit because this is something that comes up sometimes okay um i've used intuition to get three clones mm. just to get more card advantage with my commander uh, I will tell people straight up, hey, I'm not getting breach combo. You don't have to worry about this. I'm just getting card advantage. And a lot of times they'll let it go and I just get like three of my clones and then I just go back to work. That's it. Mm, I love that. It's like kind of how tall you say using the uh, using the full bull. It's like this is not just a combo piece. Like if I have both a fervent mastery and the intuition in hand on instep, let me just get some more card advantage to make my fur my breach line even better versus trying to jam a like a half-assed cooked like you know exactly like a breach line i can really like make sure like oh i have all the cards all the counter magic all the silence effects and everything i love that okay. yeah it's all it's always about just thinking not always about winning because you can't win every point of the game you, you sometimes just have to play the long game yeah. and if intuition can just get you more card advantage to push towards that long game then that's what you got to do with it Hundred percent. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Keep going, brother. Uh, muddle the mixture. We can get any two drop in the deck. Uh, most notable ones are obviously Underworld Breach. Um, we got Grand Abolisher here. Yep. That's a very powerful card in this deck. Uh, Fairy Mastermind, which helped me win uh win one of my games recently. Yep. Uh, you could get blind obedience. Uh, let's that. say if you're doing like your kitten to fairy combo and you hit muddle before you hit blind obedience or earthquake, mm -hmm. you can just muddle for the blind obedience and then just do the combo from then on and just finish the game. Right. Yeah. And depending on the cards left in your library, you can, you may not even end up needing angel's grace to, uh, you may just end up just as you loop the mox opal or whatever not you get you can or you can just keep doing the combo like that so i absolutely love that okay right. cool uh cool and we've already kind of touched on mystical tutor but is there anything notable you wanted to bring up with that one brother um mystical tutor can just get interaction sometimes like i've used it to uh to just pick up like a removal spell for somebody's um like stacks piece or like let's say i've <laughs> i did this one play in a game where i just got force of will and i, I just kind of I, I just held that over everybody's head like okay <laughs> i got a loaded gun nobody try me <laughs> yeah uh, oh my gosh i've been uh shout out to the tc community we have a gameplay section where we're like top gameplay moments where you just drop your moments like hey had a great win what great win or great loss and i learned this great lesson this is what happened or whatever not and I po especially post band, I will literally just establish my fish turn one and there's a rock sign in the pod and I will not give a fuck. I'll feed them like three cards. And in one of those cards, whether it's an Imperial Seal, Vampiric Tutor or a Mystical Tutor, I will go get a uh, go get a, a Force of Will or a Fierce Guardianship, depending on what I'm getting. And it's just like it's great when, of course, is when it's hidden with like those black tutors. But I'll just get it sometimes with a mystical tutor and just like nobody wants to waste it, you know, because force of will yeah. touches everything other than like the niche, like green cards that say can't be countered. So I love that play. It's like, especially when you know, like, hey, this hand, I just need thing to draw cards off fish. I need to go to like turn like four, maybe or five, you know what I'm saying? So like, just don't trust me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I absolutely exactly. love that. I love that. I love that. Okay. 
and transmute artifact i was very interested to learn more about this one talk to me so this is actually uh i'll talk about like the smaller artifacts that it can get yeah. first before i talk about the the main reason okay. um you can get stuff like esper sentinel yeah. uh just if you need quick card advantage um you can get uh roaming throne if you just want like a quick way to double your dragon triggers gotcha um you could also get led if mm -hmm. if like let's say you have breach and brain freeze already in hand you can just uh turn one of your talismans or signets into this into the lion's eye diamond and then you just have the combo rolled up and ready to go yeah notably even feeding your breach line more with the transmute artifact and the artifact you sacked so that's fucking hot i like that yeah yeah, yeah. true yeah very much so yeah and the big reason for this card is that Alton soldier that we mentioned oh. because it is an artifact <laughs> okay all right i i am a, i get you i could that makes sense okay so two mana um you don't have to invest anything else until until the spell resolves mm -hmm. and just two mana uh if if they counter it you didn't waste like any amount of mana that's right. relevant you just wasted the two right uh if it resolves um you just pay four more and sack like a, like we said sack one of your talismans or other rocks right and you just go get the auton soldier and you probably win from there <laughs> not yeah. gonna hold you <laughs> no I, I i definitely hear you there i was gonna say, like say you could also uh, sack the one ring but honestly i first of all i love the transmute artifact for the autumn soldier autumn soldier i think that's fucking dope as fuck getting into the next category though card advantage i want to understand your thought process on the one ring exclusion which i'm not mad about because i have my opinions opinions on the one ring but talk to me, especially with Transmute Artifact being able to sack it, to go straight to it. We've talked about card draw. It's great for Jeskai, like because of all, like um, because we made lack of tutors compared to like our black um, mana counterparts. So talk to me about that. Like, hey, fuck the one ring. I'm going to do other things. <laughs> so I had to make some important cuts. That was in the deck at one point. Gotcha. Uh, what I decided on ultimately was card advantage was not an issue with my deck that mm. I was more concerned with uh, the ability to gain mana okay. and to um, and uh, I so I had it a part of my Magda package that yeah. I had a, a, a pre ban gotcha. um, the reason was uh, with Magda I was actually just doing full Magda combo with Clock of Omens and Roaming Throne really Okay. Yes, because reason was uh, I had Roaming Throne in the deck already, and right. Magda was just a really good include. So I was like, all right, I'll put Clock of Omens in, but gotcha. it can't just be a combo piece in this deck. So I'm going to add One Ring as well, because we're making a lot of treasures. Oh. And also, One Ring is a card that we can tutor with Magda as like a secondary finisher, kind of, just to draw the whole deck. Gotcha. Outside of that, we had, if we were able to get one ring and clock of omens down at the same time with like right. a few treasures or rocks lying around we can just untap the one ring multiple times a turn gotcha. and just gotcha. draw a mass of cards um ever since i cut that package i decided that we didn't need one ring anymore I um i don't I, I don't think it's bad or anything but like i said card advantage isn't really our concern we have plenty of that Yes. um we're more concerned about gaining mana 100 percent. and i love your uh before we get into the rest of the card events because i do want to see your choices over the one ring i want to uh i want to acknowledge that i love that you thought about things and you didn't go brain dead well the one ring is a good card everyone plays the one ring so i gotta play the one ring because like, <laughs> like i see this uh this peaks and valleys of the one ring especially like some of my homies who play more just high power and casual they'll be like wait the one ring is good i'm like yeah that card is busted and so every all of them will start playing the one ring and i'm like well and they'll see one of my lists like why are you playing the one ring you know you said it was busted like oh this specific list is just not a it is not a good fit because it's still four mana thank you for the follow thank you for the follow it is still not the best fit all the time uh depending on the play style whether you're trying to be more turbo or for your example it's like look 
I can get card advantage very well. I'd rather get my work to get my commander out than work to get the one ring out, you know? And, right. and so like, especially cause we're not in black. We lot, we don't have dark ritual or cabal ritual, which these things can be used to help push the one ring out on that turn one, maybe turn two. We really only have mana vault and really grim monolith. If we have ancient tomb, which I don't even see a city of traders in this list. So it's kind of like, nah like it unfortunately y'all we gotta let the one ring go so yeah i'm not mad at that exclusion i and i enjoy the thought process that you thought about it and i just want to give you your flowers there brother yeah a lot of cats just throwing shit in there because they said it's a good card everyone said it's a good card so <laughs> yeah no yeah. I, I i hate that mindset so much it's like you gotta you gotta learn how your deck works and what's yeah. best for your deck otherwise you're just not gonna perform well that's real that's real yeah like i agree with that 100 percent and with that being said like you found that it, one ring is not needed and so you have a great card draw package so tell me about your card draw package talk to me okay so we have esper sentinel very cheap you get it down turn one you usually draw a few cards with it very powerful yeah uh don't leave home without that if you're in white hell no <laughs> hell no <laughs> uh fairy mastermind also very strong in my opinion um, the ability to flash it in is pretty cool because you can catch people off guard. Um, you can sometimes use this as like an ambush viper and just get a quick block in on somebody's Timna. If that's mm. like, if that's something you got to do, you know. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, everybody's usually drawing cards. You're usually going to see a few cards off of this as yeah. well. Uh, and also we mentioned the combo it's a part of. So it's just a great fit for this deck. If I can, uh, there's one second also add on to this point. Uh, I love this card because a lot of times when it like there's a lot of two mana creatures that draw cards. You have the Archivist, we got the Polywog now. The thing that I, even though we're in a Bowmaster's meta, the thing I love most about Fairy Mastermind and more than a lot of other ones is in addition to combo cap capabilities, it can activate itself. You know, it can trigger itself, which is huge. You know, like if Archivist said whenever a player searches their library, I, I'd say that was the best one, but. You know, you have to wait for your po your opponents for polywalk and for archivists. But with Fairy Mastermind, is like you established this turn one, starting maybe turn two or three on the end step before your turn, you're getting the draw. And then you, depending on what the turn looks like, you can get anywhere from one to four draw. Well, yeah, one to four draws, depending on what that end step turn looks like. So absolutely love like that. This card was able to see it place in here. I love that, brother. Keep going. Uh, I'll throw one more thing on Fairy Mastermind. Yeah, it's a. It's an, it's an interesting way to stacks out like a Thorical player because uh, if they go for their combo, they can't uh, exile their entire library because yeah. you could just activate and just kill them on the spot. That's very true as well. Exactly. And because you're, I agree with that 100% because you're on that controllable game plan, you're holding up mana. So it's just, they're kind of like, fuck, I can't do my decon. It's like that Talion problem where they can't run Demonic Consultation. Uh, if you all are not familiar, <laughs> Talion Kindly Lord, uh, Demir, oh, Demir list, really, really powerful list. I'm not sure how powerful it is. Post ban, that's not it. Talion has one L in it. Yes, Talion yeah. the Kindly Lord. <laughs> it's really dope and it's just a great draw engine. But a lot of times when they people helm this as their commander, they don't run Demonic Consultation because your game plan is get this out turn one, turn two. And <laughs> unless you have a sack outlet for it or a way to remove it before you push your win, your thoughts is win. It just, you have to run. Uh, tainted pact over demonic consultation and you just can't it just i've seen play, i've killed players <laughs> by their tallying out so having that tech <laughs> with fairy mass mind is fucking awesome i love it yes let's get it keep talking brother draw engines uh mystic remora mm -hmm. uh also very powerful one drop you do have to pay for it every turn but you're usually gonna get you know your uh you're gonna use you usually get your um your payment back for yeah. this card it's it's just so powerful it's so cheap people are casting uh non-creature spells all the time yeah. and the four mana tax is not getting paid for exactly. ever yeah <laughs> yeah if, if your opponent's paying for it then they don't have anything better to do and 100%. that's absolutely fine <laughs> that like, is I don't, fine <laughs> yes like please pay the four <laughs> keep going brother i hear you we got Ristic Study, also very, very powerful card. Never leave home without. Uh, never leave home without either of these two cards if you're in mm -hmm. blue. Uh, just so powerful. Just tax every single spell that gets put on the stack. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, your opponent's gonna run out of mana, or they think that their mana should be used for 
uh, other things, mm -hmm. and you're just gonna get a card off of each spell that they cast. 100%. So, um, yeah, and it, you don't have to pay for it either. You don't have to keep paying for it like 100%. Mr. Grimoire. It just sticks around. One hundred percent. I love that. Yeah. And then uh, Wheel of Fortune as our last thing. This is um, if if your hand has just been crappy all game and you have this, you can just kind of reset. Um, it's not like card advantage per se. It's just like kind of, kind of just a way to fix your hand if necessary. Or if you have, um, if you have like smothering tie out, it's really powerful because oh, then you get yes. a bunch of treasures, obviously. <laughs> but like by itself, it's like if you just need to reload, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'll give it. I'll give. It, like I know people have throw hate on Wheel of Fortune. I'll give it. It's card advantage technically because you're you're dumping your hand, feed your breach for later on in the game, and you get the fresh seven. So I'll give it the card advantage. But I know it's definitely it's a high skill card where you can't all like uh, once you get past like player one or two on the play, you know it's kind of hard to just jam out a wheel just randomly because people can use the man they use their um, mana and the cards very efficiently. So it's a high skill card definitely. It's definitely a high skill right. card, man. Also, I'll throw in that it combos with Breach if you have a way to make uh, mana. Yes. Which um, which would be Lion's Eye Diamond in this deck. Yes, I agree. And actually, I got to give flowers to someone in the chat. Bissy Baxson, shout out to you, brother. Uh, he also said wheels equal mulligan insurance policy, which I fucking love that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That, that, that is very true. Yes, that, there's been plenty. At the, this past week, I've been mulligan down to four a couple of times, and like literally, my my mullet, one of my mulligans down to four on seat three was land, lotus petal, dark ritual, and fucking freaking uh, windfall. And I was like, I'm, I take it, <laughs> I take it. Yes, like, sir. Hey, my, you like, gotta whatever, do what we gotta do. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. And I was lucky that game where player one, player two didn't do a lot, so I was like, I felt comfortable. I wasn't king making that game, but. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do so great card draw package and uh, like notably how you brought up earlier um with our commander providing so much card draw word like we don't need a super robust dust card ball package like some 10 12 card card draw package so that's cool um talk to me now you say you're in control list so show me your removal and interaction package so we'll go with uh we'll go with our counter spells and okay other stack interaction and such oh i also have i also have um i also have a stacks piece in here I, I i don't have a lot of stacks in general i just i threw this in as disruption yeah that's like the you. overarching philosophy i would say so okay. we'll start off with offer we can't uh offer you can't refuse yep um just a cheap way to just counter any non-creature spell also notably if you counter your own zero drop you can ramp which I do somewhat frequently. Oh, fuck yes. <laughs> you got a because, uh, you don't need? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or like if you have LED, perfect. We want yep. that in the graveyard anyway. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we got Angel's Grace just to make sure we don't die. Yep. Uh, just that's that's what that's all it does. They, yep. Nobody can really stop this. It just says, hey, you get to see another day. Yeah. I, if uh, I could, got, no, yeah, keep going, yeah, keep going, Brett. No, I was going to add on that I really am, I feel really bullish on Angel's Grace as well. With the loss of uh, Dockside, I think a lot of more people are going to be doing Kiki Jiki win cons, and a mm -hmm. lot of those decks are also like with Birthing Pop and other things along that line. So I think more decks are going to be running Kiki Jiki win cons, and those decks also run extra turn effects that cause them to say go all in for that turn and unless they have a silence effect or defense grid out that means you can just wait for them to declare attacks and just angel's grace and that's your game so i right. really feel bullish on angel's grace in this new meta yeah but keep going brother yeah uh we got blind obedience that we talked about already uh just a way to keep your opponents um artifacts and creatures tapped when they play them just to slow them down yep and you can also finish it uh use it as a finisher for a combo gotcha uh we got deflecting swat i love this card mm. this is just like a way to get around uncounterable things or to get around like channel abilities yep like let's say you're going for a breach line and somebody has besides you to destroy your breach mm -hmm. you could just tell them nope uh swat that hit this rock uh, too bad <laughs> <laughs> or just hit my non basic land and feed my breach. Yeah. yeah, actually, yeah, just anything else. <laughs> like, yeah. Literally anything else. 
<laughs> uh, like literally yeah, just nah, develop fucking <laughs> literally anything else. <laughs> right. Uh, cool. Yeah, if you're in red, just don't leave home without this. 100%. And then Fierce Guardianship, same thing, just like free free interaction is just so powerful. 100%. Uh, this, this deck is kind of built on free interaction because we're usually tapping out to play dragons and stuff. Mm -hmm. And if we're drawing into free interaction, we don't have to commit mana to. It's just super important. So uh, this with like force of negation, force of will, yep. subtlety, even misdirection. Okay, you mind break you, trap. <laughs> you, you you went over my you went over one too quick. You went over. I yeah, gotta, hold on, yeah hold on, I'm, hold on. I'm jumping around. I'm no, jumping no, no, around. no, no. You good? No, no, no. You good? You good? I gotta we gotta stop on subtlety real quick because I have some very strong feelings about that Ooh, in this new meta. Okay. Okay. Talk to me. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I, I think that like call me out. I think subtlety is one of the best pieces of free interaction post ban. Absolutely. I, you literally have three guaranteed targets for subtlety for the entire game, up to six, based off because literally we're playing commander at the end of the day, CDH, but it is still commander, and. Mm -hmm. This the fact that this doesn't counter the spell and puts it on top of their library gets around uncounterability and it fully can just disrupt like in those turns where you say, Hey, I just gotta get one more turn. Go for they're going for their Thassas win. Okay, that's cool. I don't mind if you go for Thassas. Try again next turn. And by that time you'll have your intuition or whatever else you need. So I love this. It notably it also hits planeswalkers. So those the fairy lines that are tough to hit because oh, I only have a fluster storm in my hand. Okay, now you also have a, uh, a subtlety. So I absolutely love this. I've hit consecrated sphinx with this. I've hit Timnas when uh, every other draw engine has been removed and they think they're about to cast a Timna and just get away with this game. Let's try again next turn. No, <laughs> and it, like no, I think subtlety is amazing. I just yes, I love this inclusion. Please, if I could have 15 thumbs up right now, I would give you that many thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, no, this card is such a good card. It's also a creature itself, yes. so it's hard to interact with too. It's like, oh, hey, I'm gonna counter your Thoracle with this, or I'm gonna I'm gonna interact with your Thoracle on the stack with the subtlety, and all you had for protection was like fierce guardianship and like fluster storm yep yeah that's not not good enough yeah it's, just it's, put it back try again next turn <laughs> like you said literally <laughs> like i don't care if you try again it literally changes the dynamic of the game where now everyone's like oh they're going to win their next turn so depending on where you're at in the seat it can either cause people to just start jamming wins and wait everyone wastes all their interaction and you go for the clean win or it's kind of like those situations if maybe if you're in a tournament they're like hey look like i'm sure there's some politic and there's something you can leverage the fact that like you know they're gonna go for the win next turn like you know it's kind of like that conversation about king making or like do we want to force the draw here or like whatever it can be like depending on what your record is i can just see this being such a layered card of so many possibilities just because it doesn't counter it you make them choose between the top of their bottom of their library and I love this card. I could talk about this all day, but keep talking, brother. You, you, yeah, you, you touched on the great, you did, you did great things, great things, great things. Keep going, brother. I do want to lump all the free interaction together because yeah. I, they, they basically all same serve the same purpose. Exactly. Like I said, we are tapping out almost every turn. Uh, we just want to get our value engines and our threats down and just get to work. Yep. So stuff like force negation, misdirection, force of will. Mental mist up even, mm -hmm. uh, mind break trap, even packed in negation. If we're in a pinch, we really mm -hmm. need just something just mm -hmm. to keep the game going. Yep. And then like we just mentioned subtlety, those are just, you're not going to be, you're not going to have to like pay any mana for them. You can tap out completely and still hold up interaction while you're, uh, developing, which yes. is su super important. Yes. Um, I will talk about the three silence effects here in Revel in Silence, uh, Silence itself, Silence proper, and then Ranger Captain of Eos. Yep. Um, just the ability to tell a player, hey, uh, you can't play any more magic this turn. Yes. And, like, if somebody's going for, like, a storm line or just anything that you could just tell them no without having it to commit any other resources is just very powerful yes uh yes. ranger captain can also tutor for a creature uh we don't have that many targets we only have two actually it's all good in uh ragavan and esper sentinel that's about it 
Yeah. But still a powerful card. They can also be used on your turn if you're trying to win. Mm -hmm. This is also super important. Yeah. Um, we could talk about Mana Drain. I think we touched on it briefly earlier. Yeah. But just a two mana counter anything. And then on your turn, you just get the mana back. Uh, you get the mana of whatever the mana value of the spell you countered was. Yes. Which is a great way to just ramp up to whatever whatever you need, really. Yes. I love that. Uh, muddle the make sure we touched on already, mm -hmm. but I've used this as just like a bad negate. Sometimes, like I said, you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta. <laughs> that's bad. That's facts. Like shit. <laughs> like they gotta like cast people... back. To, they gotta cast the, the demonic consultation. There are legal targets in the game. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are afraid to be responsible. Like, no, you gotta keep the game going, brother. Like, you can't just give up because oh, this was for breach. Like, no, this is for not losing the game now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Are you still running line tutor? You still got a fish on the board. You'll draw into it. You'll be fine. You keep. You'll be fine. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely. I definitely uh, feel you there. And we got pyroblast and red elemental blast here. Hundred uh, percent. Oh, I skipped flusterstorm. Oh, no, no, uh, yeah. I'll come back yeah. to questions. Yeah. Um, Pyroblast, Red Elemental Blast, because blue spells are just so prominent. Yep. Uh, this is a very blue heavy format. Yep. And the ability to not only counter blue spells, but destroy blue permanents, like Rhystics and Mystics that might be hindering you from uh, trying to do like a breach line or something, it's just really powerful. Um, I'll go back to Fluster. Fluster Storm is very powerful as well. Uh, you counter target instant sorcery unless its uh, controller pays one and it has Storm. Yeah. So if you're in a big counter war, this is probably going to finish that counter war. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> unless it's an MBT or another Fluster Storm. Yeah, th this is usually like, yeah, like try again or don't even try again. Like this is done. We're yeah, done <laughs> don't even try again. <laughs> <laughs> Trying is over. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we got Sink into Stupor. Love it's this also card. a land. Yeah, yeah, this card is so versatile. Uh, you can return target spell or non land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. So this is just like three mana. Sometimes you just got to three mana either counter or soft counter a spell or just bounce like a stacks piece or something or like. Yeah. If somebody is trying to win with a certain type of permanent, you can just bounce it. Very 100%. versatile. Yes. Um, one thing I will say that's like, I don't know if it's secret tech, but it is tech. You can uh, intuition, not intuition. You can mystical tutor for a land with sink into stupor. Bingo. If if, if you really need a land drop. No, like it's, it's, it's just, you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. Sometimes, like, like, look, we just we gotta do what we gotta do. I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you gotta you gotta curve out. Hey, go get you that. Uh, go get you that land with your spell tutor. Mm -hmm. well, I ain't mad. <laughs> um, and then our last our last card here is trick buying. Mm -hmm. Uh, just counter target ability. It's it's just gonna it's gonna stop like thoracles. It's gonna stop like channel abilities. It's going to stop like any activations of like a Magda or a Sisse. Yep. Just anything that's going to, you know, mess your day up. Yeah, 100%. And notably, if I can just add this on to your flow, like uh, it also says the reason, the two reasons this card, a lot of people run this over just the traditional stifle is because a split second so they can't activate any right. spells or abilities above this but the, also this if it says if a permanent ability is countered this way activated abilities of that permanent can't be played this turn right so the it's just it's great for those decks of like hey i can't stop them making infinite mana in their Kennen or thrasios deck but i can stifle their ability and it shuts it down. They can't activate in response. They can't activate anymore this turn. And in some cases, un unless they're able to rebounce it, their hand and recast it, you really can just shut down the entire win attempt. And so that's really, really, really strong uh, depending on your meta. And so I think, especially in the tournament meta where Kenan is seeing a big resurgence, uh, also the mono blue Urza, um, Lord High Arf Artificer, like these are all great things of just like, I can either stop the Basalt combo or just stop the outlet. And the only way they can get around this is literally to rebounce to their hand and re uh, cast it, which also gives you another inter point to interact and stop the engine, which is phenomenal. Right. Yeah. Excellent points. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Yo, by biology. Yeah, but before we move on to the next section, we had a question from Mighty Wiz. How red di- deep is CDH? Would you never consider a a one a one of hydroblast? Okay, so first question: How red deep is CDH? Pre ban with Doxide Extortionist, red was huge. Um, red was is like has the had Jess guy was able to lean on just those two cards dockside extortionist and underworld breach alone as great fit um combo enablers and so red is still big but it's just not as substantial since dockside got banned uh it's still prevalent like as we're talking about right now like zergo orgitai is still able to do great things you still have things like fervent mastery you still got stuff like um, will of fortune very powerful cards but and of course deflecting swat flame scroll celebrant which is red and white but it's a lot of great things but i will say that it did take a, a huge dip and so it red is not as popular as it used to be pre-ban and for your second question um would you never consider a one of hydroblast uh i'll let you answer this one what how do you feel about hydroblast in this list uh, i don't think you need a hydroblast personally so we we're already in blue Mm-hmm. And like you said, Dockside was like the biggest um, red card. And then second to that would be Underworld Breach. And I I can understand why you'd need a counterspell for Dockside. But at this point, if the biggest red spell we're worried about is Breach, we have plenty of counterspells that already hit Breach. 100%. And Hydro Blast just isn't that important, I don't yeah. think. I agree with you 100 percent yeah that was literally what i was thinking as well like the reason a lot of cats ran hydroblast in their blue list especially in mono blue was because the big like mono blue a lot of times were artifact heavy decks and the big boogeyman for mono blue was dockside extortionist and you can hit it with your uh with your hydroblast nowadays if you're saying like you hit it perfectly like i'm not wasting a high i'm not running hydroblast for deflecting swad or for a power blast or red elemental blast or not even really need to hit anybody's commander like at their point we run other counter spells to handle that and breach is it's in the champion it's we have you you've touched on so many great ones fierce guardianship pact negation mind break trap mana drain force of will like we have so force of negation we have so many great counter spells for it so yeah i i think i think we'll be fine i i, I think right now hydro Bass may have actually lost a huge stock since the uh, banning of Dockside Extortionist, especially just in CDH. And we got Bissy Backs and saying, we need more split second printings. I agree. I think <laughs> split second is awesome, bro. Like, we got our man Draco playing Angel's Grace. I, I told y'all, I love this card. Post ban, this card is muy delicioso. Fuck yes. <laughs> and we got uh, Bissy Backs and saying, Simeon Spirit, uh, Breach, Ride of Flame, Wheel of Fortune, Fury, Flame uh, with the asterisk next to it, case by case. Uh, flame scroll red power red and power blast um and ragavan this may be the whole red list now yeah i'm gonna be honest yeah like yeah we got it, it's just not red is a is become more of an accessory color outside of breach like most people are running them this is it, it's a great addition it's it it will pump your list from like a being like from like 90 to like 100 you know what i'm saying if we talk about a rating or like a 90 to a 95 to a 98 or something like, like that like it's a rate booster but you can live without red nowadays and i hate to say that because i love red it's my favorite color uh yeah, <laughs> in magic definitely so. i definitely play mostly red decks so i i can say the same thing it's a shame but that's just the world we live in right now <laughs> yeah like and i can start a whole conversation about the dark side was it good to ban or not like we could talk about that another time but yeah, ama- <laughs> <laughs> amazing questions, y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mighty, and thank you, Bissy. Um, but back to you, Draco, brother. Like, we've talked about great disruption spells, and honestly, you've hit our stacks pieces. You've hit our removal and interaction. Um, but I want to ask you, we uh, we talked about how we win. We talked about how we get there with our card draw and tutors and everything. But how do you protect your board, yourself, and your spells uh, in this list specifically? Uh, outside of counter spells, we do have um, five other uh, spells in this deck that can just like you you resolve it, then your opponents can't do anything. Um, we got the, the the newly added Revelin Silence. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this card in it similar to Silence is just a spell that just says your opponents can't cast spells this turn. Um, 
notably Revel in Silence, also includes Planeswalker activate um, Planeswalker activated abilities. Yep. And it also exiles itself. But yeah, you you just need to cast it. You just need to resolve it. Once it resolves, you can just just uh, wrap the game up with whatever combo you need. One hundred percent. We also have Grand Abolisher, Teferi, and Ranger Captain as just permanents that do it. Um, Ranger Captain and Grand Abolisher are really good um, because they're harder to interact with as creatures. And uh, yeah, most counter spells hit like non-creature spells, but uh, once you once you get one of these two down, it's it's going to be too late. Yeah, more often 100%. than not. Yeah, and then Teferi. Teferi is a little easier to counter, but same thing as the other two. Uh, once you get it down, it's going to be very hard to to uh, to do anything. And it also has removal attached to it, which is pretty important sometimes. Yes, what a hundred percent. I I bring this up all the time when I tell people about like they'll be like, "How much removal and interaction do you have in your deck?" And I always include Teferi because one of the, my favorite lines to do, like if I'm going for Teferi kidding or not, is I'll land that Teferi, fight for the Teferi, and then remove the stacks piece that is stopping me. Because they'll be like, "Oh, he can't win because of this, or he can't win because of that." And I'm like, "Yeah, whatever y'all, whatever makes y'all feel good." Land Teferi minus three, and I draw a card. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so I love that. I love that, brother. Okay, cool. Uh, amazing protection package. I think uh, I agree also with the inclusion of five silence effects. I talked to actually my boy Bissy about this uh, not too long ago, where I felt like for the longest time, four silence effects was good pre ban, especially with like Dockside Man Creep, you could be more explosive and people just had less time to establish your board. But I think post ban, because people have more time to establish your board to see more cards. I think having a silence effect is going to be more important, especially now that this, these draw engines and establishing these engines early game are just huge. So I really think, I think the number now, if you all are thinking like, how many silence effects should I run on my list? I think five may be that bare number. And if you're not in red and you're not running Revelant Silence, another great one that you can look into adding to your list, is, in my opinion, is Orem's Chant. It's a really like dope, like a uh, silence effect that also is like a counter to your your meta's kiki jiki pilot it's a uh, one white for an instant it has kicker for white and it says target player can't cast spells this turn if this spell was kicked creatures can't attack this turn so any like say, like say you're going against zergo and ojitai and you know they just top deck tutored okay I, I couldn't stop the top deck tutor but i'm a oh i'm gonna kicker my arms chance so they can't take the top card and you can buy your one turn so there's some tech how to beat zergo ojitai until he mental missteps the <laughs> Orem's chant. <laughs> so <laughs> with that being said, I love your protection, sweet brother. And with all that being said, we've talked about interacting with our opponents, but we still got to move forward. You talked about how man is important. So talk to me about your ramp package. So we we touched on offer you can't refuse already. You can counter one of your zero drops, like turn one or something, if you just want to get that burst of mana for your next turn like let's say you just need four mana on turn two for like a smothering tithe or uh maybe you want to set up something else like to fair or like a displacer kitten or something you could just do that real quick um do you want me to touch on every single rock no because not at all, all <laughs> please, yeah don't <laughs> please don't yeah like uh I, I, if I could just ask a couple questions, we've already talked on Goldspan Dragon as the super hero it is. It's really fucking awesome. Uh, but yeah. I was interested to talk about Cavern Horde Dragon and just talk to me about this. It, it's a dragon. We love dragons. So talk to me, brother. Okay. So this is a meta call, in okay. my opinion. Um, moving away from Dockside, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more rocks, mm. right? So the more rocks people play, the better cavern horde dragon gets because mm. you're going to get it down for cheap and then you're going to get treasures back equal to the number of rocks or any other artifacts that they have yes oh. so this is this was kind of one of my direct replacements for dockside just as a you know what kind of just like a speed boost yeah <laughs> that's actually really smart because a lot more because it says this spell costs x less, x less to cast where x is the greatest number of artifacts and opponent controls a lot of more people are just casting their leds or mox opals and all these other things and not giving a fuck because they're like bro like 
what do you, how are you going to punish me? Oh, you can exile my LED. I have other win cons. I don't give a fuck. Like, you're going to march of whatever, the white march and exile my LED. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. I'll counter your spell or, all right, my LED's gone. I still have, um, what's it called? Uh, the Lotus Underworld Rumble. Breach. Um, what is it called? Smothering Tide is another copy of LED for your breach line. So I was like, okay, cool. This is another. That's another copy of LED. So, yeah, like, that is phenomenal. I really, I, that's a good meta call. I think so. I really do love that. The good meta call. Okay, cool. Uh, we we already know when it comes to Chain of Vapor, we're basically using Chain of Vapor to bounce all our all of our rocks and recast them. Of course, losing crypt sucks, and it's a little harder to do all that, but it's all cool. I had a quote. Oh yes, I had a question about Mox Amber in this list, and how often mm -hmm. you find it's actually online. So Mox Amber is um, it's mainly because. If you're getting a lot of triggers with Zerg on Ojitai, sometimes you're just gonna need a lot of quick mana just to, you know, keep keep things moving along. Yeah. Um, and not just moving along, but like moving ahead of schedule. You okay. just wanna get mana down quick and easy. Okay. And it I usually don't have any issues with it. Okay. It's and usually online. Got you. And because we're the game plan of the hands are usually get Advantage Inja down or just Zergo or Jatai down. So because that's our game plan, we can usually see this online, I'm guessing, by turn two or turn three. Right. Got you. Okay. Another one that I wanted to ask about for this list specifically is monologue tax. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I have, uh, I play Marnie's Calgar. That's what we'll be playing tonight. If you just want a little, like, I love that deck so much. Um, however, what I find is the higher, the more skillful my opponents get, um, they are able to play around this Lotho like effect where like, you know, Lotho white black creature. Every time you or another opponent, uh, there's a player plays their second spell. You get a treasure, you lose a life. What I find, though, is that my smart opponents would be like, all right, well, you can't trigger this yourself. So I'm just going to play around your monologue tax and only cast one spell until I'm trying to win the game. And it hurts because I'm played like by the time they're trying to win, I get one treasure and then it just they just pop off a of silence. And by then it's too late. And so I wanted to ask, like, how this has been performing, because that's a Marnie's tokens list. You know what I mean? Like, Marnie's loves right. tokens. I'm trying to get extra value. So for you, though, like, is this, has this had, I know it's not smothering time, but has it been doing better post game? Are people more greedy or they're just playing into it? Or how has it been in the tournament scene for you? Okay. Um, I'll start off by saying this card has been great for me. Des okay. despite despite what the haters say and the naysayers okay. um i want you i want you to do me a favor i want you to type in in your uh mox or not mox field the scry scryfall uh search bar i want you to type in um rule of law okay all right yes so rule of law just says your opponents can only play or players can only play one spell per turn, right? Right. If you're keeping everybody to one spell a turn, Mox or oh. Monologue Tax is doing its job. Okay. In my opinion. <laughs> okay, so if, this this is a okay, all right, okay. I'm this is a open your like open your mind. Yeah. Kind of thing. Like this is a yeah. like, hey T, this is not I know. We want the ramp from it because the mana is great so we can pull off these big mana combos but this is a this is basically the monologue tax is basically another is, is another way to say rule of law but it either forces your skilled players to play under a rule of law or it forces your opponents to just give you a bunch of mana to pull off these crazy combos earlier in the game okay all right so to the right. audience it says open your mind <laughs> y'all like i like that i like that um before we move uh did you have anything else you want to touch on for model law tax brother um i'll just say it's it usually pays for itself it usually doubles what i put into it in my gotcha. experience okay, i've cool. never i've never been like dissatisfied with this card i, I think it's great it's either like a bootleg smothering tithe or it's a rule along. <laughs> gotcha. and i'm fine with either either of those honestly <laughs> i got you i got you I'm going to need to think longer on this card uh, because in my Marnie's list, my rule for my token generators is it needs to create treasures because Marnie's cost five mana similar to Zergo Ojitai. And uh, 
I do. I I gave. I played it early when like back in November, or December last year when I first brewed Nardius before Mox Masters January, and I was very unpleased with it. But granted, the meta was faster. Things are different. So this needs. I'm like you're gonna see live on stream. I'm going to add this to my Marty's calculator side deck. This is something I'm gonna mm. rethink. Not real shit. Like I really appreciate that whole like this is a rule of law effect, and I don't run a lot of stacks in that or it's Esper list. So this is another way to kind of pace the game similar to Lotho, making your opponents to pace the game differently. So I love that. Um, we actually have some questions from the audience. So starting off from the top, we have, uh, uh, let's, uh, what's up Zulu? How you feeling? Um, we had Mighty kind of going back to the Hydro Blast conversation. Uh, he said, was curious about Hydro Blast as it's, uh, as it's stock in Legacy at the moment is pretty high, um, but it's always a card that's very meta dependent. I agree 100%. Yeah, that CDH meta is, it t we take a lot of inspiration from Legacy, but there are key differences, you know, blue being like the powerhouse of our format. Uh, next is this, he's saying, um, what are Zergo and Earl OG's uh, bottlenecks, question mark, as in what makes ZNO stand out, uh, stand on, on their own versus other Jeskai lists, like as in Narset, Braylon, Isai, Jeskai, uh, Elsha, Zania. Talk to me about that, uh, Draco, bro. Uh, that's a great question. Um, I would go as far as to say that this deck provides the most card advantage out of possibly any other deck in the format. I mean, Blue Farm does generate a lot of value. Um, yeah. But this deck is, it, once it gets its engines going, it's very, very hard to stop. And it's mm -hmm. also, it also just helps you see so many cards at a time. Like for, let's say if we have Zergo no Jutai out and we have uh, another Dragon out and then we have like a Sakashima. Right. We're, we're getting six triggers every turn mm. and that's going to be... 18 card we get to see 18 cards every single turn like mm. what other deck is doing that <laughs> i see the uh I, that's kind of it's kind of fucking busted so now yeah. i will i will say this the i guess the biggest issue if you will for the deck is getting off the ground yeah like well, you, you do that's why mana is so important in this deck because you do have a lot of hefty costed spells but right once you once you get up off the ground, if you can get the commander out turn two or three, and then just start cloning it or getting other dragons out or other okay. value engines out, then you're you're just steamrolling the rest of the table in advantage. Mm. It's not even close. I definitely feel you there. And the cool thing, and notably as well, granted, this is very far away from Bowmasters' problem. This is not triggering Bowmasters, so it may not right. be have the same Nato effect. Like this is busted, guys. It's not fair. But <laughs> we're seeing a, a, a dramatic, like, large amount of cards, and none of those trigger Bowmasters. And to be able to like, this is so cool. How you're you're literally you're looking at the top three cards of your library, okay? And you're choosing one of them. So it's literally, I forgot what card is this. Uh, taking anticipate. From? anticipate you know uh, so it's literally taken from a magic card from our past so this is phenomenal i do i really love the examples you brought up about that so if you all are looking for some great card draw in the command zone that is reasonable to get out even like you brought up earlier draco where like land land uh led we will push it out or like land mox diamond led we'll push this out turn one to start seeing cards as soon as that because remember that this also does have haste so very very good uh, next question we have from Zulu Zach. Uh, hey, Thunder, huge fan of the stream. Inspired me to lean more into CDH and upgraded my Elemental Tribal Four Color Omnath deck into a more CDH food chain Omnath. I love that. I'm so happy. Thank you for coming over to the CDH community. I fucking love that. Please, uh, if you're not already inside the Thunder community, Thunder, uh, the Thunder Conductor community on Discord, please check the link down the bio. Join the community so we can just talk. And I would just love to see the list and just kind of check it out. That'd be so cool. Uh, let's see. We also have Mighty says one player only is the issue. Yeah, we, yeah, okay. Let's see. Um, Zulu says said with Cabin Horde, it can be a nice kill combo with Aggravator Assault. Ooh, interesting. So just to review where while we're still on talking kind of on ramp cavern horde dragon fully says uh past all the other key abilities flying champlain haste whenever cavern horde dragon deals combat damage to a player you create a treasure token for each artifact that player controls so you can technically go infinite with 
aggravated salt and so the question goes to our guest man draco how do you feel about that comb on the list this list uh yeah talk to me brother um i want to make that work um in my experience i did test this a long time ago actually okay. um it well it might be different now for this current meta now that dockside's gone and people are playing more artifacts but um the problem was that you were you weren't getting enough mana each turn to uh activate yeah like somebody might have like three or four artifacts at most and then right you're always going to be one short yeah um i would be get willing to give this another try though i do like this card in this deck uh this is a combat damage focused deck and just being able to get more triggers just for five mana is actually pretty huge so yeah i, I can see it yeah I love I love your thought process and your willingness to try this one out. Uh, this is actually a card that we run in the Rionia community. It it combos with Professional Facebreaker, Rionia, and com I mean, uh, Dockside and Rionia, and also a Sushi. We brought that one. <laughs> we talked a little yeah. bit about <laughs> Sushi. This actually like with Rionia, you also can combo with this one and Sushi, and so it is a lot of great combos. And I love it in your list. One of the reasons some people aren't a huge fan of it is because the argument is, yo, this is a dead card if you just draw it but seeing how we're looking to push zerg on, on ocha tie out on that turn one or two and two it never fully feels like a dead card because five mana seems like a lot but when we're just we're all like we're, we're cutting the one ring the one ring for more mana it kind of makes you look like hold on now this is a combo piece and it lets me do my game plan more and as draco brought up like combat damage is one of the ways we finish the game so this actually may I think uh, Flower see who is that? Uh Zulu Zach. Yeah, I think you may be onto something that like I I agree with Draco. Uh that may be something like to put some energy into replay test and post ban uh post ban. I love that. All right. Um we gonna see any games tonight from N3? Yes, we would definitely be seeing some games tonight. Uh let's see. Uh Zulu Zach asks, could Molot Log Tax be swapped with trouble in pairs? Talk to me, Draco. How do you feel about that? Uh, Trouble in Pairs, again, another fine card. Um, this deck specifically, I don't think needs it. But okay. if you're if you're in a if you're in a deck or strategy that you and you think that you need more card advantage, uh, Trouble in Pairs is fine. Hundred uh, percent. I just personally think I need mana more than I need card advantage, like we touched on earlier. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I think especially because even with the I agree with you 100 like with the harder casting costs if he's not running the one ring I don't know if trouble affairs is gonna make the cut but <laughs> it, it's definitely like it's a it's a very powerful card cannot take anything from trouble and pairs next we have uh we have um, Zulu Zach saying wouldn't monologue tax be a dead card if rule of law is out yes if you don't mind me just throwing this in there Draco um you can't build your deck based off what you think your opponent's gonna do like you got to do your game plan if they push a rule of law out please understand that everyone who's running breach is going to want that rule of law gone everyone who's running any type of two card combo which is most of the combos thasa's decon thasa's tainted pack unless they do a reverse where they do tainted pack to the end step into the thasa's in the turn everyone is still going to have to try to remove that rule of law effect so uh, seeing seeing how we're kind of in this limbo spot with rule of law, I where stacks pieces they're coming back, but people are still remind, like re quickly reminded like people still play bad. People still have to remove these stacks pieces to win the game. So do you want to be the player who has to po over politic every game just to force people to not fuck your board state up with all these stacks pieces, or would you rather be in the camp Draco where it's just like I'm gonna run settle to I'm gonna run trick bind, I'm gonna run instant speed interaction to better like to better interact with the table and then on top of that not have to like i'm the one people are politicking to me to not trick bind their kenan the kenan ability instead of on the mm -hmm. flip side like having to worry about well what if my opponents are playing a rule of law like because if they do it is what it is all right somebody 100 percent. yeah <laughs> did you want to add anything on top of that brother uh you hit all the main points well said um yeah in this deck you're you're not at anybody's mercy everybody's at your mercy yeah. you don't care about stacks pieces that much you can just keep swinging keep turning your creatures sideways and then let the game come to you mm. yeah 100 percent. i agree 
Uh, very last ones, and then we will get back to this deck tech. Uh, Mighty says, one side of rule of law is good. Would Karn, great creator, ever be played in CDH as a one-sided no rod, especially if mana rocks are getting more play? Yes, 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 yes. In this list, I'll let Draco make that decision. But in general, yes, Karn is, it was played before because <laughs> of Dockside Extortionist and it will be played post ban because it's just people are playing more artifacts because they're not as scared anymore about getting cucked. So Karn, the great creator, if you're more of a stacks list or if you're expecting that you need the removal or artifact recursion that Karn brings because you can pull your artifacts from exile like say if you are a uh Agave, an agatha soul cardinal list and you want to be able to read to your walking ballista karn is muy delicio so uh did you want to add anything on that draco yeah uh karn the great creator is widely considered one of the best four drops ever printed <laughs> uh, i was actually running karn in my deck uh in the dockside meta uh i took it out but I, I could see putting it back in if things change. It's just such a powerful card. Yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. <laughs> the way you said that, yeah, like, yo, card is one of the greatest cards ever. I mean, it's vintage, it's banned and explorer, pioneer, and vintage. Let me make this very clear. Vintage, the. Vintage. It's restricted <laughs> in vintage, meaning you can only one run one copy. So. Yes, this card is busted. So, thank you for putting more extra emphasis on this card's power level because I may have ran through <laughs> He is the great creator for a reason. <laughs> yes, yes, like fucking amazing. Uh, last one, um, misunderstanding on rule of law. Model law tax was compared to rule of law. Yes, we're not saying model law tax is rule of law. We're saying it was compared. So if people are playing around model law tax, it's effectively rule of law, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, Bro, we've talked about all these great things. I want to very quickly just uh, just recheck our ramp package because I don't think there was anything else we wanted to touch. Like everything was very pretty much straightforward. We already got to talk about Reckless Barbarian earlier. Uh, but the last one I want to ask about was I'm seeing a Striker Rich, which is really cool. Like, does this have any utility out just of ramping or is there any reason we want to include this Striker Rich? Um, I was in a situation the other day where Strike It Rich was uh, really good as just a way to filter my mana. Mm. Um, I had a I had a situation where my LED and my Lotus Petal got exiled, and I had access to like uh, Breach and Brain Freeze, but uh, I didn't have my my zero mana rocks, so I had to go for Rite of Flame Strike It Rich as the mana outlet. Mm. And, and and then go for brain freeze and then that that was the way i did the combo really what the so you, you would you would go right of flame right of flame strike it rich you would have two red mana and a treasure you oh, use one of the red shit. mana and the treasure for the brain freeze and then right of flame right of flame strike it rich again I never thought about that. And the brain freeze is filling your graveyard so much. You can do that because once the storm gets out of get the fuck out of here. I never thought about doing that. You <laughs> I had to, bro, I had to come up with this combo on the spot because I was like, yo, how do I win? <laughs> <laughs> yo, I mean, of course, they have, like I, we, we like we brought before. You can use Wheel of Fortune and Smothering Tide as another mana generator and graveyard filler. But I love yeah. your creativity with that. Yo, if y'all just if y'all once again, if you didn't catch that, um, Draco is, was leveraging Rite of Flame and Strike It Rich to be um, his mana generation to help filter red into blue to recast his brain freeze for his breach combo. And that is just phenomenal. Dude, that goat level shit. I don't want to glaze you too hard, but that that's impressive, <laughs> dog. Yeah, like um, yeah, this ramp pack is amazing. Of course, we've seen Ragavan. Is there anything you want to bring up about Ragavan, or is just it's a one drop, drop it on turn one, hit some beats, or which anything you want to add? Uh, that's that's it. Uh, he he sometimes he steals a card, but he's mostly there just to make treasures, uh, just to get your mana acceleration going. That's about it. 100 percent that makes 100 percent sense okay all right uh now that we've talked about our uh ramp we got to go to roof you know magic the gathering by richard garfield was built on lands so talk to me about our notable lands categories anything special you want to talk about outside of like the traditional fetch targets and all that other good stuff 
Yeah, I got um, I got four lands that are, I guess. Uh, mm, I guess we could talk about like a few more. Um, we have obviously we have our duels, we have our fetch lands, yeah. We have our rainbow lands just to fix our colors. Yep. Uh, gemstone caverns. If you have it in your opener, you start with an additional mana for yep. for the game. Uh, ancient tomb soul lands are just really good. Uh, you just have two colorless mana at will. Yeah. And then um, we'll talk about the two surveil lands I have in here. Mm. Uh, yeah, for for those listening, I did say two. Spicy, um, okay. It's uh, yeah, like I think just filtering your card draw is just really strong and yeah. especially on a land like you could fetch this at any time when you have nothing else to do with your mana you can you can just set up your next draw maybe you can put something in the graveyard that you don't need or that you want in the graveyard specifically yeah like like anything from the breach combo um yeah just having access to two of them just feels really nice 100%. i don't know yeah no nah, i i definitely respect how you said that it feels good because I I cannot sit here statistically and say it, whether that's right or wrong. But if you're yeah. saying it feels good, like like experienced CDH players just have like um you'll find over as you continue to play, um you'll just find like oh this just felt good or this one kind didn't really feel good. It, like how you brought up about the Jessica uh the Spellseeker line. Um if you mm -hmm. all are not familiar with it, the Spellseeker line works where you get Spellseeker, you ephemerate to go get Final Fortune, go to the extra term, ephemerate goes off, you go get the rest of the breach line combo. That is, it's a very great combo. It's a viable combo in CDH. It's been played for years. The thing is though, some players really just don't play it because it doesn't feel good. And like, for example, Draco was like, nah, I'm not trying to die to Final Fortune. So like stuff like that, um, it's, you just get that sense of feeling. So I respect it, bro. Yeah, I have not, no shade to throw, yeah. If the surveillance feel good, I, I, I ain't going to throw no shade. So, yeah. And, <laughs> and of course, we already talked on Sink of Stupor. And this is a solid. This, this is, yeah, this is a great land package. Nothing, nothing, a little extra to talk here. So, um, with that being said, before we go into our playtest hands, are there any other um, notable categories that you'd like to touch on for this list? Uh, I don't think we actually talked about the clones yes. that much. Uh, just as like the icing on the cake, we'll talk about the clones. Yeah, talk to me. Uh, as, as we briefly mentioned earlier, Auton Soldier is probably one of the best, if not the best cards in this deck for this commander specifically. Hmm. You just, you clone your commander and give it Myriad. You just see so many trigger, you just get so many triggers and see so many cards. Um, outside of that, Sakashima, Sakashima, and Spark Double, they all do a similar thing, but without Myriad, you just clone your commander once, and you get four triggers in instead of the one, yes. or instead of two if it was like another dragon. Yeah. And then I threw Roaming Throne in this category as well, because it does a pretty much similar uh, yeah. effect to the other cards. Um, you just double your triggers, and then it itself is a dragon, so if you attack with this, you'll get two more additional triggers. Um, this is also cool with, like, Goldspan and Cavern Horde, just getting double the amount of treasures that you would normally get. Yeah, 100%. I, yeah, I, I have to definitely say I love the inclusion of these clones because, of course, Autumn Soldier, is that's her combo piece. And in addition, it's just it's this energy of like, hey, like once if we can get around the legendary rule, like just to sit there and be like, yeah, we'll get four triggers. We're seeing 12 cards. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's huge. That's drawing four cards, literally just for four mana. After we already have our commander out, you're drawing four cards for four mana. I think that's a that's ancestral recall. <laughs> or is that the, right. uh, yeah, is that the card? Oh. Which, which was the four, one four cards for wait four cards for four mana is that what you said yeah no that's not like i'm trying to think of a card that's similar to but i think a, a mana per card the point i'm trying to make a mana per card is a good rate you know what i'm saying plus the fact <laughs> that you're seeing 12 cards you're it's card selection and card advantage which is phenomenal i love that yeah man great package and i, I think it's perfectly synergistic and notably oh that was another very last thing uh we i got a ask one more time for the spell seeker line because i love that line but i respect uh your opinion on it um is there a universe where if you ever got back on the spell seeker line you can see it being viable with the notably because i found in my personal experience that ephemerate 
is amazing with clones because you can flicker them and they can come in as another creature. Granted, we've lost Dockside as a, as a target, but there's still a lot of great creatures like Orcish Bowmasters or other things that are really powerful that is worth cloning. You know, and I want to ask if that is something that may entice you to maybe tap back into that spell seek, or is just now nah, like let's just clone our commander and we're all good with that. It's mostly just clone the commander. Um, I if the meta were to speed up like a tremendous amount, I could see going back to the spell seeker line as just an additional way to just finish the game quickly. Yeah. But um, outside of that, uh, I think I think I'm fine with what I have here. Uh, right. Like I, I I respect the combos, just like yeah. If I I don't I don't think I need to run it, you know. No, hundred percent. I I definitely feel you there. Okay, cool. I feel you there. Like this is an amazing deck. You there's been quite a few cards that I am very like I like I I'm you sold me on some cards. You sold me on some cards. I'll say it like that. Uh, and I'm really excited to just get these plate uh, to get these plate test hands knocked out. Before we do get into that, I just want to say to everybody. As I always say, like, thank you for being such an amazing audience at this point, And like, y'all are awesome. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Before we before we move past that, I believe we've touched on all these cards. Uh, we've already talked on Psych Rifters and Sweeper. That's fine. Just make it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's get into these play test hands. How we do it now is I'm going to roll a D8 and that will tell us what seat position you're in. And then this new meta is so new. I don't know what decks we'll choose, but <laughs> I'll roll a D8. You got a six, so you're going third. So let's say uh, playing going first is Kinnon. Going second is Rogsai. You are going third on Zergo Ojatai. And going fourth is, let's say, Urza, Mono Blue Urza. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's okay. go see our first seven. Okay. It is a City of Brass, an Arcane Signet, a Talisman of Creativity, Esper Sentinel, Mental Misstep, Brain Freeze, and Earthquake. Mm. We're in seat three. There's a rock. Who was in seat four? Seat four was Urza. Rock side was seat okay. two. Two. Okay. Um, I would keep this on a lower mole. Uh, I think we can find a better seven. Ooh. Okay. 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 All right. All right. Uh, we'll keep going. Let's see a second seven. We have Sacred Foundry. Bloodstained Mire, Command Tower, Angel's Grace, Enlightened Tutor, Grand Abolisher, and Teferi Time Raveler. Okay. Uh this is this is a decent amount better. I like this because um we can hold up mana every turn for this Angel's Grace, but we're also gonna be holding up Enlightened Tutor. So okay. I, I like being able to go enlightened tutor get um mystic remora and just just start developing on a card advantage axis uh and while also holding up the angel's grace while also holding up angel's grace correct okay because we are uh, granted i don't know if urza uses that as a uh uses um thosses but that at least should help you navigate the rock side list for their turn this is a turn two fish, so Rock Size more maybe more of a turn three deck instead of a turn two deck now. Case mm -hmm. by case, they can still win on turn two. But th we're hoping that they feed us enough so then when they push, we can drop the Angel's Grace, do our thing, and then go into our turn with a full grip of cards. We already got a Teferi in our hand, so if we draw Kitten and a bunch of mana or whatever we want to do, there's a lot of options. Okay, I respect that. I, I did feel, if I could throw this out there, I was kind of, I would have kept the first seven because it's, on C3, personally, I love seeing the mental misstep as both the way to protect my uh, Esper Sentinel, but also kind of like I have to be aggressive with the interaction. So I probably would end up hitting a tutor from Rock Side, but I can be aggressive with it. And because I have two mana rocks, I can piece by piece start developing my board. And as I draw into other things, have I respected your willingness to to drop down to second seven because I would have kept that first seven snap keep. I'm like land <laughs> Esper, like, oh, you try to mental misstep, miss the misstep, your mental misstep, or hold on my mental misstep for rock size, like vampiric tutor or whatever, mystical tutor for brain freeze or whatever they try to do. So yeah, I love this. Okay. Well, I will, I will say this. Um, 
I I have to be disciplined in not keeping one landers because they always backfire on me. I, uh, I just <laughs> I, I always try to get greedy and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll just draw another land and then sometimes I don't and I'm like, well, I'm out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. That man, you you oh my gosh, I actually had this question for you. So with the loss of Mana Crypt, I have been telling a lot of people that like you know. I just switched it out with the land of your choice. I actually switched my mana crypt out for an island, and then I went into the uh, that MDFC, the specimen, whatever it was, specimens was like a MDFC. So I have I actually went from twenty eight lands to twenty nine lands, and so I wanted to ask you: Do you think that, especially as a control deck where those land drops, consistent land drops are important? Do you think that twenty seven is too low, or do you think just be a more aggressive mulliganing is better for like this control mid range archetype? Well, I I do I would say that aggressively mulliganing is important just for any deck in general. You just need to keep a hand that's able to play magic because mm. if you just if you're afraid to mull under five and you just keep a <laughs> hand that does nothing at five, then what are you doing? You know, right, one hundred percent. But gotta, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, that was it. Go ahead, brother. Um, to answer the other question, um, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the other question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, with the loss of Mana Crypt, I've been recommending a lot of pilots. Just go ahead and just add a land in, and I've always uh, recommended right. 28 lands is good. So now it's kind of going to 29. It's it, it feel felt ridiculous, but my land drops have been feeling smooth. And I can comfortably keep those one lander hands, but I want to ask: Do you feel like twenty seven has been getting the job done, or do you think you may need to go up to twenty eight, maybe twenty nine lands? I want to ask about that. In my testing and just in my experience in general, twenty seven is the perfect amount of lands for this deck. Gotcha. For whatever reason, yeah. I've went to twenty eight. I always flood out, uh, and <laughs> I've, went, I've went to I've tried twenty six before, and I just don't find land. So like twenty seven, just it it just gets it done. Yeah, and this was pre ban or post ban? Both. Uh, really? I've been doing okay. testing. I've been doing testing outside of that, and it's just like I consistently yeah. hit just the right amount of mana with twenty seven, just no matter what. Yeah. I, I can't yeah. explain it. This... No, no, no. <laughs> you know what I think it is, and please correct me if, if this if this hypothesis is, is wrong. I think because you can keep hands with just mana and immediately look at the top three cards your library and put one of those into your hand, you can like keep aggressively mana filled hands and be like, all right, for sure. Or of course, like how this hand was the example of I'll just keep the fish, but I'll just go for that turn two fish with the angel's grace as my way to like not die to like a thosis or whatever not. But I feel because like you can be so aggressive just for mana, it allows you to like have less lands because like for other decks that say I need uh, a card draw advantage engine, you sometimes you don't get best of both worlds. You don't get mana and card draw. Sometimes you have to choose like I have to take let like I have to I have to mulligan for my card draw engine, meaning that I have to run more lands to to uh, to fill the gap of where my deck it was struggling in another place. Versus if you like no my commander from the minute I drop it is going to see me three cards and put one in my hand. I can if say if I only have one land, I can't even get to my Zergo Ojutai versus I have a heavy mana hand. I'm gonna I the counter spell that I was looking for, Zergo will give it to me. That another piece of ramp or that whatever it may be, Zergo is gonna get me to that point. So I think that may I that's my hypothesis why you can run 27 and it feels so good because you can just like a mulligan for uh for mana is a viable for the deck. Which is awesome. It's an awesome, like, I don't want to call it a problem, but it's an awesome problem to have. You know what I'm saying? Like, that your commander is that viable at, like, keeping your game plan going. That's phenomenal. You know, that's a perfect analysis, honestly. I, I am able to just keep mana heavy hands because, yeah, you just have card advantage in a command zone. So you just pick which axis that you need to uh, accelerate on, and you just, you just go from there. I love that. Okay. Well, we're going to do one more play test hand. And sure. this time we will go ahead and roll. I'm gonna roll D8 again. We got a one, so we're going first. Okay, it's a new day. Go. All right, going first. Second's gonna be Blue Farm. You know, New Age Blue Farm, but a little bit slower. We will have right. our third seat is going to be Godo, post band Godo, and Ooh. our fourth seat will be Omnath, the new four color. The not the new one, but it's the four color Omnath food chain. Okay. All right, so that's okay. our pot, and we're going to deal another hand. 
we have City of Brass, Steam Vents, Fairy Mastermind, Brain Freeze, Subtlety, Submerge, and Simeon Spirit Guide. Mm. These are some this great is... sevens, bro. This... These are interesting. Yeah. I, I don't hate Fairy Mastermind here because Term Blue one. Farm Blue Farm is going to be drawing cards. Yeah. So that's going to get fed there. Mm -hmm. Goto can get hit by Subtlety or Submerge. Yep. And then Omnath is just going to do Omnath things. You know what? I don't hate this. I don't I don't hate it either. It's turn one Fairy Mastermind. I think that like that's my when I'm mulligan, that's like I I usually run Archivist Fairy Mastermind plus uh Polywog. If I can get them Jones down turn one, it's almost a snap keep most time. But I think your analysis was perfect that you can impact the table in a great and you also have one part of a combo piece that can be top deck to their hate case by case, but you know what you're working towards. You know I'm working towards a breach combo, you know, so yeah, I love this. Yeah. Damn. Right. I would I would say for this hand, I don't think you want to get Fairy Mastermind turn one. Ooh, talk to me. Um, I do want to save the Spirit Guide for later in case we need to hit our like fourth or fifth mana or something like that. Got you for Zergo. For that, or like let's say if we top decked like a Rhystic or like a Smothering Tithe, then we're gonna mm. want mana for that. But like uh, outside of that, we just have interaction for like relevant stuff that the other players are doing. So I'm I'm actually happy with this hand. Hundred percent. We didn't do it for the last hand, but let's do it for this hand. Uh, let's get one draw and then see how this goes. Okay, yeah. top deck was a Psychrift, so very another okay. spell that can get pitched to subtlety. If you want to keep the submerge around, you hit it right on the head. That uh, this is that subtlety is great against both the Omnath if they want to push that out to start doing flicker shenanigans and the Goto. Like I don't know what Goto is gonna do when you bounce it to the top of their library and they put the trees in its ogre and they pay already paid thirty three life. So exactly. <laughs> Yeah, like this is phenomenal. Yeah. And we have a green player, so you don't have to worry about, you know, some how casting submerge. And last thing I did want to say, I love your thought process. It's um I'm usually a player that will push first fairy master at mount out turn one, like on in step, even if I have nothing better to do, because then for me I'm thinking oh, I can start holding up the psych rift, hard cat the baby rift uh on turn two with the steam vents and city brass. But I love your thought process for this deck specifically, always keeping in mind we're working towards our commander. So even if like if no one draws a second card, hold that fairy mastermind a little bit longer. We can play it on turn two and have the Simeon Spirit Guide as we draw cards and other things. People's drawing just get online. So then we can always have that Simeon Spirit Guide for later again. We don't have to waste it per se too early. And so I really love your thought process on that, brother. That's really good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, with that being said, we saw two amazing hands. We just had an amazing deck tech. I want to say Draco, D David, aka Draco, brother. Thank you for an amazing deck tech. And if, if there's any closing remarks or any reasons why you would say, yo, choose Zergo Ultra Tide even post ban, just talk to us. Let us know. Uh, again, I want to thank you for having me. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, Zergo Ultra Tide, uh, dragons are up right now. Yeah. Uh, we, we turning creatures sideways. We getting in big damage. We putting <laughs> lots of cards in hand. That's it. <laughs> like if you if you want to play uh, Magic the way it's it's uh, Richard and Garfield intended. Hey, pick this deck up. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely feel you. I definitely feel. You. Thank you so much. And before we uh, do any anything else, I want to uh, ask one more time. We had a question right now. One last question. What land would you have, would you have led on? Uh, with that Draco hand. He went to ask in Mulligan 2, what land would you let with the City of Brass or Steam Vents? Great question. Uh, you're going Steam Vents untapped. Reason why is because you want to bluff any anything, but more importantly, you want to represent um, Submerge, which is uh, it's only active if you have an island. So you're going to have to lead with that Steam Vents if you want to keep that up. Man, masterfully said, masterfully said. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Draco. Well, dude, we got to get into some gameplay, y'all. So before we get into that, I got one last thing to say to the audience. 
If you're looking for ways to support the show, we have a plethora. Everything from Thunder Country and Electric Merch. Check that out. Link in the bio. I got this TC swag. It don't come with a chain, but it comes to get you that thing thing. Also, check out the link in the bio if you want some Thunder Conductor proxies. Uh, we do offer tiers on our Patreon Thunder Legion where you can get free proxies and discount codes. But if you just want to say, hey, I got a tournament coming up, T, proxy friendly, just hook me up with these cardstock or paperback proxies. I got you. I brought it up, but check out the Thunder Legion. I want to give a huge shout out to our Mono Red patrons, Wavy Ashira, Bissy Baxon, The Praetor, B Rad, and Sir Trekkie. Y'all rock and you keep the lights on the way that you could not imagine. Yeah, please check that out. We also have our Thunder Conductor, Conductor community. It's free to join. Check it out it's all good and dandy on discord we have good time jamming games talking brewing and all the other sorts and last but not least if you say at i don't want the patreon poxies or any of the other perks i just want to say one time for the fun time i love what you do and i want to support you check the link down the bow buy me a coffee it keeps me up and keeps the lights on but with that said thank y'all for being an amazing audience and i will see y'all very soon for the zergo ojitai uh, gameplay peace